What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the second part of a story where Izuku met the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 2. Using his spear key, Izuku opened the door to the restaurant leading the class inside. Once they went in, he didn't forget to flip the sign to close. Whoa, you work here? Kirishima asked looking around. I heard this restaurant become famous ever since they hired a new employee months ago, Hagaker said. Yeah, I heard he's slick on the skateboard, Kaminari said. I heard he's around our age and that he's super hot, Mina said dreamily. That comment made Yuraka who was behind her pull a shuriken from her boots. Luckily, Izuku was there to grab her hand before any of her classmates see that their friend was carrying a lethal weapon. Once she calmed down, Izuku went to the door of the kitchen. Excuse me Midoriya, but who's gonna make us food if there's no one else here? Ida asked. Izuku didn't say anything but walked up to the door leading to the kitchen. Not to worry my fellow customer. Just take your seat and leave everything to me, he said before opening the door and disappearing from 1AS site. Doing what he said, everyone took their seats and waited for Izuku to come back. The girls chose to sit at one table while the boys sat at other places. I still can't believe you have a brother Izumi, Momo said taking her seat. Yeah, why didn't you tell us? Asui asked. Well. She said before hearing the sound of a door opening. Everyone turned around to see Izuku wearing his uniform while riding his skateboard while holding a bunch of menus in his hand. He went around each table throwing out menus to each classmate while performing tricks. While skating he even poured out glasses of water for everyone. No way. He's the guy. Kirishima asked surprised. Dude. I'll totally be your best friend if you teach me some of those tricks. Kaminari said in excitement. Same, Mineta who was sitting beside him said. Whoa, so he's the pretty boy who made this restaurant popular, Mina said looking at Izuku move around. Watch it, Mina. That pretty boy you're talking about is my boyfriend, Yuraka said glaring at her. Oh, but you can share right? She asked only to feel a flash of wind go past her hair. She moved her eyes to her side to see strands of her pink hair slowly falling. The girls who were sitting near looked past her to see a butter knife stuck into the wall. Mina looked back to Yuraka to see her hand in a position as if she threw something. I said. He's. My. Boyfriend, she said in a cold voice which sent shivers down everyone's spine except for Izumi. Okay. I'll stop, Mina said in a squeaky voice while sulking in her chair. The tension was released when Izuku stopped skating and came over to the girl's table while holding a pen and a notepad. Okay, Machi. Please don't try to kill your friend, Izuku said. Now, what would you ladies like? One by one everyone gave their order. All that was left was your rocket and Izumi. And what would you like my sweet little Machi? Izuku asked looking at his girlfriend. Babe, you should already know what I like, Yuraka said with eyes of desire which caused him to blush because they have others around. He shook it off and looked at Izumi which caused his eyes to twitch. And what will you have? He said trying to keep his smile. Izumi stayed quiet for five seconds before answering. You're my brother. You should know what my favorite foods are, she said with a straight face. Her saying that caused him to nearly crush the pen in his hands in anger. But he kept his face straight. Oh yeah. How can I forget, he said in a happy voice going back to scribbling in his notepad. Okay, I'll be back guys. How long will it take cause I'm really hungry, Mineta asked. Yeah, dude. There are about 20 about us, Kaminari said. Izuku took up his skateboard and placed it under his arm. My friends, just give me about 10 minutes, he said before once again disappearing into the kitchen. 10 minutes. I doubt even I could make pizza for 20 people that fast, Sato said. Hey, don't underestimate my boyfriend. He can be one heck of a cook, she said remembering the day he went to her house and made her breakfast. Izumi stared at her then at the kitchen door. I'll be right back. Gotta use the restroom, she said getting up from her seat. Once she left Mina decided to speak to Yuraka again. So. How far did you guys go? She asked curiously earning a fork close to her neck by the one she was asking. Never mind. Izumi slowly approached the kitchen door while checking to see if anyone was watching. She was even glad that Mina was distracting Yuraka. She slowly opened it and slipped inside. Trying to be as stealthy as possible, she hid behind a stove watching her brother. Izuku was currently standing in front of all the ingredients like he was strategizing. Just like when we were little. He always so focused, she said to herself until she saw something that made her eyes open. Her brother's eyes instantly turned blue, and two katakanas emerged from his hands. If you're gonna watch me, you might as well stop hiding Izuku said not turning his gaze away from ingredients. Izumi who was shocked slowly stood up from her hiding place. So I was right. It was you at the USJ, carapace, she said. 
So you knew from then? Izuku asked. Yes, Izumi said back. Izuku not saying anything else used one of his blades and lifted everything into the air. Using space-time, he sliced all the ingredients five seconds flat. Izumi watched in amazement at how the sliced up cheese, pepperonis, onions, green peppers, tomatoes, and other toppings fell on the pre-made doughs he laid out. She shook her head trying to stay focused on her main task. What happened to you brother? She asked. Izuku stayed quiet as he continued to work. If you were alive all this time, why didn't you come home? Izuku stopped what he was doing, turned around, and looked at her with a face full of anger. Are you really asking me why? He asked straight out. Let me ask you. Why would someone who's been ignored by his parents and harassed by his little twin sister ever come back? She then began having flashbacks of all the times she and Bakugo harmed him with their quirks. Once he ran away and she saw the way his room stayed, she couldn't help but feel immense pain in her chest. She then began to feel tears slowly roll down her eyes. You're right. You're completely right, she said as she dropped to her knees and began crying. Once Izuku saw this scene bits of his anger slowly started to turn into pity. He closed his eyes and opened them again. Izumi looked at the men realized they shifted from blue to orange. His katanas were replaced with his kusari fundo. Her eyes widened in fear when he started spinning it, and the ball on the end turned into flames. W wait. Izuku, please. I'm sorry, she said backing up to a corner as he slowly walked up to her. I never meant for you to be neglected by mom and dad. Please. Don't. As Izuku came closer, she closed her eyes once she felt the heat radiating from his weapon. Suddenly, Izuku turned the other direction and blasted the fire into the direction of the pizzas. The Kursari Fundo make a tornado of flames cooking the pizzas. She opened one of her eyes to see Izuku laughing. Just like when we were kids. You're still the Scardi Cat, he said holding his stomach while still laughing. Once he recovered, he went to the cooked pizzas and took up two, so one's in one hand. As he approached the door, he turned around to see Izumi getting up. Look, know this. I have no intention of forgiving you, Kachin, or mom and dad. But, if it weren't for you guys neglecting me, I would never have gained these powers and abilities and became my very own hero. I even have a girlfriend and brothers who understand my situation and train with me. Between us, we're nothing but two humans who know each other's names, he said turning away from her and exiting the kitchen, leaving Izumi to hold her shirt. Brothers? She asked herself feeling a bit of a sting in her heart. Once outside, Izuku hopped on his skateboard and went around the restaurant handing out small pizza boxes. The class couldn't help but feel impressed by his speed and agility, as he handed each of them the boxes. Izumi took her seat with the girls and watched how her brother laid everything out. Thanks, man, Kaminari said. Yeah, this smells amazing, Jiro said. If you think that's amazing, wait till you taste it, Yuraka said. Well, let's eat then, Mina said as she took a bite from a slice of her pizza. Everyone stayed silent waiting for her response. Suddenly, her eyes opened wide until they shaped like black flying saucers. Eyes, are my clothes still on? Mina asked surprising everyone. No, but I wish, Mineta said earing a long distance tongue slap from Tsu. W we're you asking that Ishido? Momo asked with a blushing face. Because. This is the best pizza I've ever tasted. She screamed as she stuffed her face with the rest of it. Everyone, wanting to know what she was talking about, took bites from their pizza. All of their faces brightened up as they took bites. Holy crap, I didn't know pizza like this existed, Sato said eating his in one bite. I think I wanna marry this pizza, Hagakur said stuffing her invisible face. Ooey, this puts Italian pizza to shame, Aoyama said eating his pizza with a fork and knife. Dude, have you ever thought of working with lunch rush at UA? Kirishima said snacking on his pizza. Thanks, but working here is good enough for me, Izuku said drinking a bottle of water. But, I'm glad you all like it. Oh, that sucks. Cause I'd love to have your food every day, Mina whined while liking the grease of her box. Please accept this Midoriya, Ida said, handing him some yen. Yes, please. This marvelous meal must be paid for, Momo said handing him a buttload of yen bills. Gee thanks, guys. But I told you I'm treating you so there's no need to pay me, Izuku said pushing back the money. But I can give you guys some takeouts. Yes please. Everyone shouted with excitement which caused Izuku to sweat drop at how everyone is full of energy. Dude, you should hang with us sometimes, Kaminari said wrapping his arm around Izuku's neck. Yeah, you gotta show me how you do those skateboard tricks, Mineta said. I want rematch you in the dance game sometimes. As Izumi ate her pizza she watched how her brother was being surrounded by the boys in her class. Izuku really looks happy. I guess he really doesn't need me or mom and dad to be happy, she thought to herself as she continued to eat her pizza. 
For the rest of the day, Class 1A hung out with Izuku at the restaurant like playing Karaoke with the Juka Box or playing the Mario Kart racing game the store just installed. Later in the evening. Everyone began leaving the store saying bye to Izuku. Just like he said earlier, he made enough pies for everyone to take home. Thanks for the meal dude, Kaminari said. Yeah, Emma treasure this pizza for later, Mina said rubbing her hand on her box. As class president, I must give you my sincere gratitude, Iida said, bound to him with Momo doing the same thing beside him. These guys, that's a bit much, Izuku said laughing. Seriously dude, when you get days off, you should hang with us. We don't mind another guy in the group, Kirishima suggested. I'll think about it. If anything, Machi can give you my number. As everyone left, the only ones left were Yuraka and Izumi. Yuraka went to her tiptoes and gave Izuku a peck on the cheek. Will I see you tonight? She whispered in his ear. If you're awake then maybe, he whispered back. I'll be waiting, she said before giving a side glance to Izumi. See you. As she walked past Izumi she said something. Try something, and you'll regret it, she said before walking home. Izumi was left standing there in front of her brother. Look, I know what you're gonna say, but... Izuku said before being cut off by her. No. You're right, she said surprising Izuku. You're way happier this way, so I won't do anything to jeopardize it. Izuku looked at her and despite having a smile on her face, she has tears falling from her eyes. He didn't know why, but he could feel tears building up in his eyes. I really am sorry for what I did to you. But I still love you, big bro. That's why I gotta let you go, she said whipping the tears from her eyes while turning to leave. As Izuku watched her leave, he placed his hand on his cheek and felt the tears trailing down from his eyes. Why am I crying? Could it be that I really miss her? He asked himself still looking where she went. Once he wiped his eyes, he went back inside the store, turned off the lights, and went to his lair. The day after Class 1A hung out at Pizza Hut restaurant, they were getting ready to board the bus to training camp. Man, I'm stoked for this camp. Thank God, Mr. Azawa allowed us to go, Kaminari said excitedly. Yeah. I can't wait to roast some marshmallows right Uraka. Mina said looking at the brunette who was on her phone talking to someone. I've been really looking forward to this trip Izuku. I wish you could come with us, she said on the phone. Okay, love you too. Once she hung up the phone, she turned to see Mina giving her a sly look. What? Uraka asked. We'll only be gone for a couple of days. You two can go smooch or whatever once we come back, Mina said making kissy faces. SH shut up. Uraka said with a blushing face. Bakugo who walking past them saw the scene and got curious. What are two idiots doing? He said walking up to them. None of you pussy. She said before being cut off by Mina. Oh, we were just talking about Uraka's amazing boyfriend. We met him yesterday, Mina said, causing Bakugo's eyes to go bug-eyed. You've done it now Mina, Uraka said mentally slapping her face. Boyfriend huh? Bakugo said looking at Uraka. Yeah man, he's so cool, Kaminari said walking up beside them. The way he rides the skateboard is so awesome. And he makes the best pizza, Kirishima said joining the conversation. Just him saying pizza made everyone besides Bakugo, Yuraka, and Todoroki drill. What I found so amazing was that he was Izumi's older brother, Tsu said putting a finger to her mouth. As soon as Bakugo heard the words Izumi and brother in the sentence he turned to Izumi who looked away. She found him. She saw him. He's really. He shouted in his mind. Okay, everyone gets on board the bus now, as always said snapping Bakugo out of his thoughts. Once they got on, the bus then departed to the secret training ground. While on the bus, Bakugo sat next to Izumi. You mean to tell me that you saw your brother yesterday and you didn't bring him back? Do your parents know? Bakugo asked her. No, and I won't tell them, Izumi said. But why? Bakugo asked surprised. Izumi turned to him with a sad smile on her face. Because bringing him back would only remind him of the pain me, mom and dad inflicted on him. When I saw him yesterday, he was looked so happy and alive. I can't possibly take his happiness away, she said trying her best not to cry. Bakugo sat back in his seat and thought about what she said. Yeah, I really hope you're right and the nerd's happy, he said looking out the window. Yuraka who was overhearing their conversation sighed. At the Pizza Hut restaurant, Izuku was busy mopping the floors of the restaurant. Izuku, can you come into my office? He heard Max call him. Izuku placed his mop down and went inside his office. What's up Max? Izuku asked. Well, the thing is, I got a call from the main office for Pizza Hut, and they said I should close up shop, he said that brought fear to Izuku. W I'm fired, Izuku asked in fear. What no? I meant like I closed this shop. He quickly said which made Izuku sigh in relief. They want us to relocate to another store in a different city. Oh, okay. 
I don't see no problem, Izuku said still catching his breath. Max just gave him a puzzled look. Izuku, what do you plan to do when you grow up? Max asked. That question caused Izuku to look down and clench his hand. I actually don't know. From when I was a kid, I always dreamt of doing was going to UA and becoming a hero. But because of what my family did to me, I don't even know what I want to do anymore, he said while looking at the hand he used to make the Rasengan. Even though the bandages were off, he could still see the bruises from using that technique. When the turtles gave me my powers, all I thought was just to use it to protect people, and that's it. Max got off up from his desk and walked around to Izuku and placed his hand on his head. Izuku, I may not know what happened in your past, but I do know you have the heart of a hero. Now that you have these gifts, you can use them to show the world that they have someone they can look out for, he explained. But I'm already doing that, Izuku said. No offense, you may think you're a hero, but everyone just sees you as a vigilante. Don't waste your entire life being hunted and working at a small restaurant. Try and become a true hero, Max said. Izuku looked down the ground. I'll, I'll think about it, Izuku said. Max smiled at his best employee. Suddenly, the phone began to ring interrupting them. Max took up the phone and answered it. Hello, Pizza Hut, he said. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, oh no, uh huh, 30 pies for delivery. This shouting caused Izuku to hang his mouth open. Max gave him a look that Izuku was able to understand. All he did was give him a thumbs up telling him he could do it. Okay, I'll need an address, he said while scribbling it down on a sticky note. Wow, that's very far. He once again looked at Izuku who gave him another thumbs up. Okay, we shall have it delivered in under two hours, he said hanging up the phone. Izuku are you sure you can make that delivery? It's very far and we have a reputation for delivering pizza in under two hours. Since I have never been to this place, I can't use my Udachi. But if I use my Vespa, I'm sure to make it, Izuku said clenching his fist. Then hop to it, Max said. Izuku saluted him before heading to the kitchen. Izuku, I don't know why, but I think this will be your last delivery as a Pizza Hut employee. Phew, 30 pies. Now I just need to deliver it, he said looking at the tower of pizza boxes. He then took out his phone, entered the address, and searched for the address. Once he saw how far it is, he choked on his air. Wow, that is far. Good thing it's only an hour drive, he said placing the phone in his pocket. He quickly took the elevator down to his lair so he can get to his Vespa. As he reached down, he hopped on it and tried to start it up. Unfortunately, it made stuttering sounds. Crap must have forgotten to refill it ever since I went to dinner with Achako's parents, he said while looking at his watch. How am I gonna get there now? He looked around his lair hoping to find something that'll help him and won't reveal his identity. Suddenly, his eyes landed on his skateboard. That's when a crazy idea popped into his head. He grabbed a roll of duct tape on his desk, at strapped his T-phone which was on the GPS app to the front of the skateboard. He then went to the kitchen and placed 15 boxes in one hand and 15 in the other. When Max saw him he thought he was crazy. Izuku, what about your Vespa? He asked. It's out of commission, but don't worry. I got this he said skating out to the street with 30 boxes in hand. I swear that kid is crazy, Max said watching Izuku leave. While skating, Izuku keeps looking down on the front of his board watching the GPS. In one quarter mile turn left, said the GPS lady. Whenever he comes up to stairs, he always alloys over them and skids on the railing. As he passed people, he would get his picture taken. He can't blame them cause he's doing something both idiotic and awesome. While riding, he was so focused on his phone on his board that he just realized the road was starting to become very smooth. Weird, why is the road so smooth? He asked himself until he looked up and saw that he was between a bunch of cars. I'm on a highway. He shouted looking left and right. He looked down at his phone and noticed he was on the right course. Damn it, I should have set this to give me direction if I was walking instead of driving. He looked back to his T-phone and noticed he only had 20 more minutes, and he was almost there. No, I can still make it. I got the speed and strength of the ninja, he said pushing his foot on the ground giving himself more boost. On the bus that was transporting all the 1A students, Yuraka was buying time by looking at pictures she and Izuku took when they went on dates on her phone. Once Mina got the gist of it, she sighed and grabbed her phone. Come on Yuraka. We saw him yesterday, give him a break, Mina said. But I miss him, Yuraka whined. You're just jealous cause I'm the only girl in this class to have a boyfriend. That comment just made all the girls in the bus blush in embarrassment, while some boys even Bakugo snickered from her comment. D's girl that was cold, Kaminari said trying to hold his laughter. Alright, that's enough. It's even more annoying when you bring up love, Azawa said in a tired voice. But I must admit, she did catch God a good guy, Kirishima said. Yeah, and he's Midoriya's brother no doubt, Siro said referring to Izumi. Uh, guys. 
Mineta said looking out the window. Midoriya's brother? Todoroki asked. Oh yeah. You weren't there. He's this awesome skateboarder who works at Pizza Hut. He makes the best pizza, Kaminari said. Eyes Mineta said raising his voice a little louder. Man, just thinking about his pizza is making me hungry, Mina said, forgetting about her embarrassing moment. Maybe when we get back from camp we could visit him again, Sue suggested. Yeah, what do you think Izumi? Hagakur said looking at the green-haired girl. Sure, maybe, was all she could say. Eyes Mineta shouted so loud gaining the attention of everyone on the bus. Mineta, what could be so important that you had to shout like that, Ida said. He's right there, Mineta said pointing outside. Being very curious, everyone including Mr. Azawa looked outside. Just like he said, everyone can see Azuku carrying 15 pizza boxes in each hand while riding his skateboard right beside their bus. What they can't believe is that he's moving at the same speed as the bus. Yuraka quickly opened the window. Azuku. She yelled gaining his attention. He turned his head to see everyone opening their window. Machi. Guys. He said looking at them. Once he saw Izumi, he felt sorrow in his heart, but when he saw Bakugo, that sorrow was replaced with anger. Kid. What are you doing? Azawa asked from his window. Making a pizza delivery what else? Izuku said. Dude. You're riding your skateboard on a highway. Mineta said. Yeah, I know but. He said before being cut off by a scream. Look out Momo shouted while pointing. Izuku looked in front of him to see a car slowing down towards him. Without even thinking, he jumped off his board allowing it to roll under the car and ran on top of the car while still carrying the pizza in his hand. He then jumped off the car and landed perfectly back on his board. He looked back to everyone to see their mouths wide open. Sorry guys can't talk right now, he said as he pushed his legs on the ground to speed up. Everyone on the bus including Mr. Izawa had faces full of shock, see him going faster than a bus except for Yuraka. Yuraka, does that boyfriend of yours have some kind of speed quirk? Mina asked surprised. I've known that guy from when we were kids and he's was diagnosed quirkless, Bakugo said still shocked seeing Izuku for so long. You and Midoriya were childhood friends. Kirishima asked. Bakugo stayed silent before answering. Used to, he said watching Izuku disappear from their sight. Well I for one can't believe a quirkless person was able to jump for a car while holding pizza and go past moving vehicles, on a skateboard no less, Momo said. I can't believe he couldn't spare a slice for us, Kaminari said. I just hope the food at camp is tasty. You're going there for training, not for relaxation, as always said looking up at that front of the bus through the window. A quirkless kid huh? With skills like those, he could actually be a quirkless hero. Suddenly the bus stopped in front of a cliffside. Okay, rest stop, Mr. Azawa said telling everyone to come off the bus. Turn left and then you will reach your destination, said the voice on Izuku's GPS. As he turned left, he stopped in front of a big gate. As soon as he got off his skateboard, he placed the boxes on the ground. I I made it, he said to himself trying to catch his breath as he began to feel his legs give out causing him to drop to the ground. Crap, I must have had so much adrenaline while riding my skateboard, I didn't even feel the pain I was putting into my legs, he said as he felt his body get dizzy and pass out on the ground. While Izuku lay there a car approached the gate. The headlights that were shining on Izuku's body turned off as six people exited the car. One of them was a six-year-old boy who walked up to Izuku's body. What the? Is this the pizza delivery guy? The boy said. Why is he on the ground? The lady wearing a red cat outfit walked up to them. She looked at Izuku and at his skateboard which still had his phone taped to it. Impressive. It looks like he rode his skateboard, she said looking at him sleeping. Seriously? That's like miles away. This kid might be good enough to be my mate, one with a blue catsuit said licking her lips. Back off Pixie Bob, said a very tired voice. Coming out of the car was Mr. Azawa himself. His eyes widened when he saw who they were looking at. Wait, I know this kid. I'm impressed he was able to make it here before. He was able to move faster than a moving vehicle. On a skateboard. This kid must have impressive stamina, a tall man wearing a cat costume. Well, we can't just leave him out here. He put that all energy so that our students can at least eat, a lady with green hair wearing the same cat costume said. I agree, let's take him in so he can rest up. Tiger. The red cat lady said looking at the big guy. As Mr. Azawa watched them take him up and carry him inside, a thought came into my mind when he looked at the pizzas he brought. Carrying that much pizza while having the speed to outrun vehicles. I think there's more to that kid than meets the eye, he thought to himself. Hey, you. Help me carry these boxes would ya? The boy with the spiked hat said while holding some boxes. Azawa forgot what he was thinking and went to help the kid. At around sunset, every member of Class 1A was currently walking through the forest all beaten up and exhausted from fighting rock beasts made by Pixie Bob. 
Man, I'm so tired. Minetta shouted. And hungry. Mina shouted. Just, be grateful we'll get a proper meal to eat when we get back to campgrounds, he eat a lecture despite him dragging his legs on the ground. They want to talk. My arms are still sore, Izumi said rubbing her arms. Serves you right, Yuraka whispered. We eat, Kaminari said, due to electrical overload. Well, eat is right. At least we'll get to eat some delicious. He said before freezing in place. Everyone stopped walking and looked at him a little worried. Yo, red-haired. What's your deal, Bakugo said looking at him confused. Suddenly he started sniffing the air. Pizza, he blankly said with wide eyes. Huh? Said Bakugo. Pizza, he blankly said again. Being curious, Mina sniffed the air too only for her to freeze on the spot too. Pizza, she blankly said too. You two raccoon eyes Bakugo shouted at her. One by one, everyone beside Bakugo and Todoroki began to sniff the air around them. Pizza. 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 Once Yuraka and Izumi smelled the air, both their eyes widened in excitement. The smell. Both of them said at the same time. It's Izuku's pizza. But that being said, everyone forgetting their pain and tiredness, began running at full speed following the scent leaving Bakugo and Todoroki behind. So even used their quirks desperate to eat. What was that about? Todoroki asked surprised that their classmates could have that much energy. How the hell should I know I see hot? Bakugo shouted. But no way I'm gonna be left behind. With that, both of them tried to catch up with their classmates. At the training camp, the WWP, Wild, Wild, Pussycats, set down the last amount of pizza boxes on tables. That's the last one, Mandalay said dusting off her hands. I bet those kids are gonna be very hungry and tired when they get back, Pixie Bob said. HMPH, the boy with spiked hair said. Suddenly they heard bushes rustling. Huh, they're back sooner than I thought, Mandalay said expecting them to be walking like zombies. What she didn't expect was the ground to rumble and for the whole class to come in like Wilbist in a stampede. Even Mr. Azawa was surprised by how full of energy his class has. He followed their gazes and realized they were heading towards the boxes of pizza. Using his capture gear, he wrapped one leg of everyone causing them all to fall over. I see. So you all get a burst of energy when pizza is involved, Azawa said as he retracted back his gear. So we're actually having pizza for dinner. Kaminari said recovering from his dumb state. I'm starting to this camp already. Consider yourself fortunate. The truck that was carrying the ingredients we were gonna use to cook dinner wounded up in the middle of a villain attack. The driver survived, my the food not so much, Mandalay explained. It's surprising Pizza Hut had such a determined delivery boy. Yeah. I mean he rode on skateboard miles away from town while holding pizza boxes. So my type, Pixie Bob said. All who were still face planted on the ground quickly rose their heads when they heard what they said. Did that boy have green messy hair? Izumi asked. And have freckles? Yuraka asked. Yeah. What you losers know him? The boy with the spiked hat said. Koda. Please be nice, Mandalay said. He's our friend actually, Iida said. Well, your friend is quite impressive. We found him passed out in front of our gate after traveling so far, so we placed him in the boy's room to rest, Pixie Bob said. With that said, despite being tired, Yuraka and Izumi got off the ground and ran inside the building. Deku. Bakugo said to himself with wide eyes as he watched the girls run. So can we eat? Kaminari said breaking the silence. First take a bath, Pixie Bob said holding her nose. The girls ran around the building until they stumbled upon one last room. This is the last room we haven't checked yet, Izumi said about to open the door. Why are you here by the way? Yuraka asked annoyed. Izumi lowered her hand and looked away. Despite him saying we're just people who know each other, I still love him as a sister as you love him as a boyfriend, she said with a strong voice. Yuraka just made a HMPH before opening the door to the boys' room. They looked around to see empty futons until they saw one with a hump in it. The two of them looked at each other before tiptoeing to it. As they reached it, they kneeled down and pulled the sheets to see the one boy they both love sleeping soundly. Oh, Izuku, Yuraka said stroking his cheek. She looked up to see Izumi doing the same thing. Just looking at him reminds me of when we were just kids, she said looking at him. I always find his sleeping face so adorable. Iraka looked back at his face and laughed. I can see what you mean. Makes me happy to have a cute boyfriend like him, Yuraka said. And it makes me happy to have a big brother like him, Izumi said. The two looked at each other surprised they basically saying the same thing. They couldn't help but laugh at each other. As they calmed down, Izumi looked back down at her brother. My brother's a strong vigilante huh? Izumi said causing Yuraka to gasp. Before she can ask how she knew, Izumi cut her off. Heh, don't worry. He knows already and I didn't tell our parents. 
Iraka sighed knowing that her boyfriend's secret is safe. Yeah, he's very strong and amazing. That's one of the things I admire about him, she said stroking his hair. Izumi couldn't help but smile thinking about the things her brother does, despite some of it being illegal like working outside the law. Hey Yuraka, I'm sorry for what I did at the sports festival. I never got the chance to apologize, she said. Yuraka looked at her in surprise before giving a little chuckle. I'm not saying I forgive you, but I'm glad you apologized, she said. I still don't like you. Izumi couldn't help but give a little chuckle too. And I still don't like you, she said. So can I move now? A voice said startling the both of them. The two looked down to see Izuku's eyes wide open. Izuku. Both of them screamed. Also can I breathe too? Said causing both to look at him with a confused face. Cause no offense, but you guys are sweetie and smelly. The two of them looked at each other before smelling their clothes. Both their eyes widened at the stench and ran out of the room while screaming. While Izuku was laughing at how funny they were, a man with very tired eyes was standing outside the room hiding in a corner listening in on their conversation. So, my hunch was right. He is the young vigilante, he said grabbing his scarf ready to capture him. But then he started to have second thoughts when an idea formed in his head. He came out from the corner and opened the door like he was just coming. So you're awake? Azawa said looking at Izuku. Yeah. But you for letting me rest, Izuku said as he stood up from the futon he was sleeping on and neatly folded it up. Well, I better head back to town. Once he said that and began walking towards the door, Mr. Azawa blocked his path. I don't know. It's a long way back to town, so why not you stay here for a while and rest? You can even watch our students train tomorrow, Azawa said which surprised Izuku. Consider this a payment for the hard work and sacrifice you did for our students and your friends. Izuku lowered his head as he began to remember what Mac said to him. Don't waste your entire life being hunted and working at a small restaurant. Try and become a true hero. Okay, let me just my boss know, Izuku said as he pulled out his phone and texted Max. Max who was using his key to close the restaurant, heard his notification tone. He opened his messages and smiled when he saw what Izuku texted him. He just chuckled, placed the phone in his pocket, and went back inside. He went into his office and retrieved a sign saying we have moved. He left the store and placed it on the door. Izuku, I believe this will be your first step in becoming a hero, he said as he placed a hat on his head and walked off. Back at the camp, the boys were currently in the hot baths relaxing. Man, despite being hungry, it feels good to soak my body, Kaminari said with the boys agreeing. I hope Midoriya makes it back to town okay, Iida said. You mean Izumi's brother? Tokoyami asked. Of course, he said before being interrupted by the sound of the door opening. All the boys looked at the door to see someone unexpectedly wearing a bath towel. Oh, hey guys, Izuku said. Midoriya. They all shouted. What? The boys heard from the other side of the wall that was separating the male and female bath. Not you. This Midoriya. Mineta said who was leaning on the wall. Izuku is that you Izuku heard your Raka shout. Yup it's me Machi. He said only to receive an ear-piercing scream. What are you doing here? Ida asked. Well, for payment for delivering the pizza, your teacher said I could stay here and observe you guys train, he said as he sat in the water with everyone. Suddenly another scream came from the girl's side. Shut up round face Bakugo shouted. Watch your mouth. Kachin, Izuku said giving a murderous glare. Everyone was surprised when Bakugo actually stayed silent. Well, if we're done with introductions. Mineta said before leaning his ears back on the wall. What's he doing? Izuku asked with his eyes twitching a bit. Sorry. He's basically the class pervert, Todoroki said. Now that I think about it, I saw you at the sports festival. Yeah. My girlfriend told me you've been accepting your fire more, Izuku said holding out his hand. Todoroki looked at it before shaking it. It's thanks to you honestly, he said actually smiling causing everyone to be surprised. Is there anything this guy can't do? Everyone asked themselves. Hey Izuku, Kaminari said causing the green-haired boy to look at him. If you're gonna be staying here you might need some clothes. You and I look about the same size. Oh thanks, Kamayanari, he said remembering he does have clean clothes and that if he teleported back to his lair, it would cause suspicion. Suddenly everyone's thought was cut off by the sound of Iida shouting. Mineta get down from there. He shouted. Everyone looked to where he was looking and saw Mineta using his quirk to climb up the walls. It's time I go plus ultra. He shouted with a drooling mouth. Upon instinct, Izuku jumped out of the water at blinding speed towards the wall and delivered a roundhouse kick to Mineta's face, causing him to fall to the ground. WH what was that? Mineta asked rubbing his cheek. He looked up to see Izuku standing above with his hair covering his eyes. I may be quirkless but listen to this. My girlfriend is behind that wall fully exposed. If I ever see you lay one eye on her in any perverted way. 
He said while clenching his fist tight. All right, he said terrified. Thanks Izuku, all the girls shouted. Once they all finished bathing, they all met up at the benches where plates of pizza were laid out for them. Midoriya's pizza. Everyone shouted in excitement. They sat down and began to eat. Oh man, this pizza's better than last time, Kaminari said. Well enjoy it while it lasts because tomorrow you'll be cooking your own food, Mandalay said. Oh man, some people said. Izuku laughed at how everyone was acting until his eyes landed on Kota. Later, everyone was retiring to their quarters. Mandalay allowed Izuku to sleep in on a couch once he changed into the clothes Kaminari gave him. As he lay down, he slowly allowed sleep to take him over. What he didn't know was that someone opened the door to the room he was in and kneeled down next to his sleeping body. Sweet dreams Izu, she said holding onto his hand. The next day, Izuku woke up at the sound of yelling outside. H huh? What time is it? He said as he took out his tea phone and checked the time. Six in the morning. He jumped off the couch and walked outside to see everyone wearing what seems to be gym clothes with extremely tired looks on their faces. He couldn't blame them since they were tired yesterday. He then saw Izumi and Yuraka with their hair all messed up. The two of them looked at Izuku who was trying to hold in his laughter. Yuraka then mouthed something that Izuku was able to understand. Make one chuckle, and you're dead, she mouthed causing Izuku to stand up straight. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will begin training camp to increase your strength in earnest. The goal of this training camp is to increase everyone's strength and with that, for everyone to obtain their provisional licenses. It is to prepare you all to face hostilities that are becoming more real by the minute, Mr. Azawa explained, while Izuku leaned on a nearby tree. Izuku then watched how everyone in Class 1A is pushing hard to improve their quirks. So this what it means to go beyond plus ultra, Izuku said looking at everyone pushing their limits. He even sees Izumi doing some weird exercise. Midoriya. He heard someone say behind him. He turned around to see Mr. Azawa. Yes sir. Izuku answered. Follow me, was all he said as he began walking in the opposite direction. Izuku, feeling something is up decided to follow him. Azawa led him into an open field that was surrounded by nothing but trees. Why did you bring me here sir? Izuku asked. Apparently, the principal of UA took an interest in you, he said with his back turned to Izuku. Why would he be interested in me? I mean, I'm just a quirkless pizza boy Izuku asked both confused and surprised. After saving my students from the League of Villains at the USJ, he thinks you have the quality to be a true hero, he said, causing Izuku's eyes to widen in shock. But I'll put that to the test. Suddenly out of nowhere, he turned around, threw his capture scarf, and wrapped it around Izuku's arms and body binding him in place. He looked at Mr. Azawa with a are you crazy face, only to see him giving off a smirk. Show me what you can do. Carapace, he said. Despite still being surprised a pro hero figured out his identity, his eyes formed the Hamato symbol and turned red. Mr. Azawa was surprised to see twin Sai appear in both his hands, and two Izukus appeared. He turned his head back to the Izuku he was holding only to see him disappear like a projection. I'll show you what I got, both Izuka said as they held their say up and ran towards Azawa. Each clone tried to stab him, but he just dodged them with ease. Without even knowing he delivered a blow to the stomach to one of the Izakas causing it to disappear. Azawa looked at the one that was still standing. So you have cloning? He said looking at Izuku. Not just that, he said once again running to Azawa except he changed his eyes to blue. Once he summoned his katanas, he threw one towards the pro. He dodged it causing it to hit a tree. That was a sloppy move, Azawa said feeling unimpressed. I wasn't aiming for you, Izuku said with a grin. Suddenly at blinding speed, Azawa felt a kick to the face as Izuku teleported past him back to the katana he threw at the tree. At the same time, his eyes turned red, summoned his tonfa, and jumped off the tree. Our smash jutsu. He shouted as mystic force fields came around his arm and delivered a blow to his hero's stomach. Azawa was sent a few feet back from the punch. He couldn't help but look at Izuku and smile. This kid's something else, he said rubbing his stomach. I'm ready when you are. Izuku shouted as he shifted to tech jutsu and pulled out his bow. I think that'll be enough, Azawa said retracting his scarf. Besides, you better put that staff away before everyone sees you. Doing what he said, he unsummoned his staff and shifted his eyes back. So aren't you gonna arrest me? Izuku asked confused. As a pro, I should, Azawa responded. Izuku got ready to summon his Adachi. But I can see by your actions, you want to be more than just some vigilante. Izuku's eyes widened by what he said. Izuku, I think you can be a hero, he said putting a hand on my shoulder. Izuku couldn't believe what he heard. A pro hero was actually telling him, a vigilante, that he can be a true hero. Thank you, sir, Izuku said smiling. You know, I had a slice of your pizza. You're an excellent cook and that's coming from me, Azawa said. 
but Lai was taught by the best, Izuku said thinking how Mikey taught him all the recipes for good food. Suddenly, he got an idea. Say, didn't Pixie Bob say the pussycats won't cook the students? Azawa got the idea and knew what he was thinking. I'll direct you to the kitchen, he said as both of them walked in a certain direction. Later that evening, all of 1A were walking like zombies after intense training despite being cleaned up. Man, I thought training camp would have some s'mores and campfire, Mina said. Yeah, I'm as tired as hell, Kaminari said. And what's worse, we have to cook our own dinner tonight, Mineta said rubbing his head. If that's the case, then what's that smell? Todoroki said. Everyone stopped in their tracks and smelled the air. It smells like curry, Mina said. I wonder who's cooking it? Izumi asked. Well then let's go see, Yuraka said having a huge feeling who it was. Everyone ran to the same place they had dinner only to see something unbelievable. Each table had food laid out in a fancy style. Hey, guys. Glad you could make it, they heard coming from a makeshift stove. They couldn't believe their eyes to see Izuku frying something in front of him. Order up, he said putting down one last plate. One by one, everyone sat at the table looking at the food Izuku made for them. What? The what? Is this? Yuraka asked as the fork she was holding over it. Haha. <laughs> I heard that you guys were gonna make curry once training was over, so I decided to make something special to thank you all for letting me stay here, Izuku said. Introducing Izuku style. Pineapple fried rice. The aroma of the rice filled up the air causing everyone even Todoroki and Bakugo to drool a little. Slowly everyone pushed their fork inside the rice and lifted it up to their mouths. At the same time, everyone bit into the rice and opened their eyes in shock. Izuku, Azawa, and the pussycat stood there watching them. Uh. Are you all okay? Mandalay said before being cut off by the sound of everyone scarfing down their food. I don't know why, but I can't stop eating. Momo shouted scarfing down the rice. You sure it's not cause you overused your quirk? Jiro said scarfing her own rice only to receive a furious shake from her head. The hell did the? I mean Izuku put in this. Kachin said with a bowl to his face. It's so fooing good. Don't know and I don't care. This is awesome. Mina said. That's my boyfriend brother for ya. Both Yuraka and Izumi said at the same time as they breathed out the scent of curry from their mouth. Man. This is so delicious, I think I can do more training, Mineta said jumping off the bench and doing push-ups. Haha, <laughs> you are welcome guys, Izuku said rubbing the back of his neck. He looked around to see everyone enjoying themselves, even the teachers enjoying the meal. Although, he noticed someone was missing. Huh? Where is that Kota kid? I have a plate prepared for him, Izuku said looking around until he noticed a dark path leading into the woods. I'll be right back guys, Izuku said carrying a plate of the food he made into the forest. While walking, he ended up seeing Kota sitting near some kind of cliffside. H hey, I said gaining his attention. Pizza boy. What are you doing here? Kota said in a shocked voice. Izuku's fine and I brought some food for you. I haven't seen you all day today, Izuku said sitting next to him. Well, I didn't want to be near those losers, Kota said in an angry voice. Losers? Izuku asked confused. Those guys are training to become stupid heroes. All they'll be doing throwing away their lives to protect people they don't know. My parents were just like that, Kota said in an angry voice. Wait, your parents were heroes? Izuku asked curiously. Yeah. They were the water hose. They died because they were protecting everyone from this dangerous villain, he said as he curled up his legs. Izuku could have sworn he saw a tear roll down his eyes. Izuku closed and placed a hand on Kota's head. W what are you doing? Have you heard of the vigilante carapace? Izuku asked. Of course, I heard of him. Everyone knows him, Kota said. What's your point? He saved me once from a gang trying to rob my delivery and told me about himself and his life before being a vigilante, Izuku explained gaining Kota's attention. Though his parents are alive, he's just like you. His parents left him behind. If anything he would have ended up becoming a villain who wanted to get revenge or even kill himself, thinking there is no place for him in this world. But it changed when he met people who were there for him and showed him the respect he always wanted. So, what you're saying is? Kota said before being cut off. I'm saying that you are not alone in this world, Izuku said. Kota looked down and keep his mad face. What the two didn't know was that Izumi was hiding behind a tree listening to their conversation. She held her head down, trying to keep her tears in. I wish we were better back then, she said as she slowly walked back to the class. The next day, everyone continued their training while Izuku watched on the sidelines. Normally what he'd do is watch from the sideline and take notes on how everyone uses their quirk and help the pussycats prepare meals. Just like he told Kota, he hasn't said anything about his secret hideout or about his parents to anyone. On the night everyone headed into the forest for a test of courage, Izuku decided it was high time he head back to town. 
Are you sure you want to leave? Azawa asked Izuku who was holding his skateboard in one hand and his Adachi in the other hand. Yeah, I am responsible for cleaning up the restaurant after all, Izuku said receiving a nod from Azawa. You should know, if I catch you doing vigilante, I would have no choice but to arrest, Azawa said causing Izuku to lower his head. You could either stop working outside the law, or you can work to become a true hero. Izuku turned around as the thought of working with his father and mother at UA came into his mind. He still can't bring himself to forgive them for all the pain. I'll think about it, he said before walking into the dark forest to avoid being seen by anyone. Once he was about to open a portal, something unexpected happened. The sound of a giant explosion caused the ground to shake. W what the heck was that? He said looking around. He looked up to see smoke rising in the air. The fire? I thought it was just a test of courage, Izuku asked as he ran through the forest. He then approached an open field to see Mandalay fighting a lizard guy who's dressed up like Stain with Izumi in the background. Pixie Bob, where's Koda? He heard Mandalay say while short of breath. I don't know. He wasn't at dinner, Pixie said. Suddenly both Izumi and Izuku remembered something. I know where he is. Both siblings said at the same time as they headed to where he might be. Koda. Hand in there. Izuku said as he summoned his suit while running. At the same time, he pulled out his Adachi. Thank God I've visited the place, he said as he swung his sword and opened a portal on the ground. Once he jumped through, he fell between Koda and a hooded muscular villain. Why you? Your carapace. What are you doing here? Koda said even though he was trembling in fear. When I heard the villains were gonna attack, I came as fast as I could, Izuku said in a deep voice to keep his identity a secret from him. Don't worry, I'll protect you. The haha oh man, this is good. I get to kill a little boy and a vigilante at the same time carapace was it. The villain shouted. If you ever, lay a hand on this child. Deku said as he pointed his adachi to the villain. I'll kill you. Strong words kid. The man said as he removed his cloak. Why don't you show me what you got? Using ninja speed, he used his katanas to do a powerful slash. Unfortunately, his sword didn't make a scratch on him as he used his forearms to block the blade. Is that all you got? The villain mocked as he used his foot and knocked Izuku into the wall. Izuku, who had pain in his back, tried to get back up. If my blades won't be able to scratch him, how the hell and I gonna beat him? He said to himself as he slowly got out of the wall. He then shifted to his tonfas and generated large arms around his hands. Take this. He shouted as he unleashed barges of punches on the villain. Unfortunately, the villain again increased the muscles in the stomach area where Izuku was punching. Seriously? That's your quirk? The villain said as he back slapped Izuku away to the ground. Thanks to his enhanced strength, he didn't sustain that much damage. Man. I came here looking for two brats, and now I get to kill the vigilante this is just great. What he said gained Carapace's attention as he lifted his head off the ground. Brats. What brats? He asked standing up to his feet. Well, since you're gonna die, I might as well tell you. The villain said. I'm looking for someone named Midoriya and Bakugo, the villain said. Izumi and Kachin. He mentally said as he stood up. What do you want with them? Don't know don't care all I care about is seeing blood. The villain said as he ran towards Carapace ready to deliver a punch. Carapace stood in front of Kota ready to block his punch, only to be surprised by a rock flying straight toward the villain and hitting him in the head. Both boys turned their heads to see Izuku running towards them with her arms stretched. Izumi what are you doing here? Carapace said. When I heard Kota was left alone, I came here, she said standing beside him. How do you even know about this place? Carapace asked with a bit of confusion. Never mind that, he's standing up, Izumi said looking to see the muscular villain standing up. Well, 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 muscular said standing up. I was looking for you Izumi Midoriya. Wh what do you mean? Izumi said a little freaked out. Apparently the villains are looking for you and Kachin, he whispered to her since Kota was standing behind him. That man. Kota said in a trembling voice. Both Carapace and Izumi turned their heads towards him to see him trembling in fear and tears. He's the one who killed my parents, the water hose heroes. Both siblings' eyes widened once they heard that. Once they heard a maniacal laugh from Muscular, they turned their heads back to him. So you're the son of the heroes who gave me this left eye. The villain said pointing at his fake eye. This must be fate. Now I get to kill you too just as I did with your mommy and daddy. While Carapace gritted his teeth under his mask, Izumi clenched her fist as sparks emitted from her body. You bastard. She yelled as she ran straight for Muscular. Izumi no, Carapace shouted stretching out his hands. Tsmai ash. She shouted as she went in for a punch only for it to be blocked by his muscular quirk. Before she could even get back, the villain used her muscular hand, grabbed her by the hand she used to punch, and lifted her up in the air. L let me go. 
Just like the guy over there, you're completely inferior to me, he said as he used his muscular hand and crushed her arm. Ah. She screamed as she felt every single bone in her right arm get crushed. Izuku's eyes widened in her horror and anger to see his younger sister suffering like that. He especially lost it when he saw the villain toss her like garbage to his feet. He stood there watching how her arm and head bled. Under his mask, as tears rolled down from his eyes, he clenched his teeth so hard that blood began rolling down from his mouth. Yes. That's what I wanted to see. Blood. More blood. Muscular shouted. Izuku looked at the villain as his eyes shifted to Hamato Green. Hoda, watch Izumi, Izuku said walking towards the villain while moving his fingers in a circular motion. WH what are you gonna do? He said while kneeling beside Izumi. Izuku then stopped walking. I'm gonna kill him, with one blow, he said as a green orb rose from the palm of his hand. Ha! What is that? Muscular mocked as he increased the muscles in his arms and began running towards them. Just give up and die. You're no hero. You're right, I'm no hero, Izuku said as he ran towards him while still generating Ninpo in his hand. While running, the sleeves around the arm he was generating his Rasengan began to rip as the orb grew bigger. I'm just a guy who doesn't stand around and watch people die. Wait, is it getting bigger? Muscular mentally said as he was coming closer. Massive Rasengan Izuku shouted as he thrust it into the villain's abdomen, causing a huge shockwave on the mountain. Koda tried his best to hold down Izumi who was unconscious, but unfortunately they were both blown off the mountain, due to how powerful it was. Wakoda screamed as he flew off the mountain. As he saw the ground approaching, he closed his eyes thinking he was actually gonna die here. But when he didn't feel the ground he opened his eyes to see was only two feet off it. He then felt something around his waist. He looked to his waist to see a glowing orange nunchucks wrapped around him, while the cap he was wearing fell off and dropped. He looked beside him to see Izumi hanging by the same chain. He looked up to see Izuku, whose mask was destroyed by the Rasengan, using his left hand to hold Koda, while using his teeth to hold Izumi. Sorry. For blowing you away, too. He said through his teeth. Using his strength, he used his arm and teeth to pull them both up. He then laid Izumi on his lap while Koda stood beside him. So? You were Carapace the whole time? Koda asked. And she's what, you sister? Izuku didn't say anything except push back a bit of her hair and tried to shake her awake. Yeah, she's my little sister, Izuku said looking at her. Suddenly, her eyes slowly began to open. Be big brother. Izumi said trying to open her eyes. Both Izuku and Koda smiled to see her awake. She turned her head to see his arms a bit bruised. Your arms, you used that move again. Ha, hey, you want to talk. Your arms completely broken and you're worried about my slightly bruised arm. He said laughing with tears falling from his eyes. Slowly a smile grew on her face as she began laughing too. We really are siblings huh? She said while laughing. We both can't stay out of trouble. Yeah, we really can't, Izuku said laughing a bit harder. He smiled and pulled her into a hug which surprised her. Don't go dying on me. She smiled and used her non-broken arm to hug him back. Koda who was watching them couldn't help but smile and how they were bonding. Let's get you two back to camp, Izuku said trying to help her stand up. Suddenly the sound of rocks rumbling gained all three of their attention. They turned their heads to see the muscular villain walking up to them. No way. Koda said standing back. It can't be. Izumi said struggling to stand up. Impossible. That was the biggest Rasengan I have ever made, and it barely did anything, Izuku said shocked. I have to admit. Why you very pee-powerful kid, Muscular said struggling to walk. He looked down to his abdomen to see blood leaking from the large wound where Izuku struck. You really got me to see my own blood. To their shock, he began increasing the muscles where he was hit. They couldn't believe he was healing himself. Although, that's not enough to kill me just yet. Get ready to die, Muscular shouted. Izuku looked at Koda and Izumi, and knew deep down that they were afraid as he was. He knew that if he doesn't take a stand, they all were gonna die. He stood up to his feet and slowly walked up. Izumi, take Koda and yourself back to camp, he said as he tried to make another Rasengan with his bruised hand. I'll finish this. What? Don't tell me you're... Izumi said holding her broken arm. No. It won't work big brother. Let's run. Yeah. She's right. That attack you called the Rasengan didn't work earlier. Koda said until his eyes laid on his arm. Besides your arms all bruised up. It's gonna be fine, he said as he formed a tennis ball sized Rasengan. I'll kill you right here kid, Muscular said as he formed his entire body into enhanced muscles. And after that, I'll kill those two as well. I won't let you hurt Koda or my precious little sister, he said as his Rasengan grew brighter. Izuku no. Your arm won't make it, Izumi said trying to walk over to him but she was still weak from the beating she got. I'm gonna finish this, right now Izuku said while holding the arm he had the Rasengan in. Oh, man. 
this is gonna be good. Come on I'll make spill all the blood that I want muscular shouted while increasing the muscles in his arms. The two of them stared at each other for 5 seconds before charging in at full speed. Once they clashed, Izuku was pushing his Rasengan against Muscular's fist. Pathetic. That was weaker than before. Muscular shouted as he pushed his fist further causing Izuku to slide a bit. Brah, shut up damn it. He said as he put more Ninpo into his Rasengan, causing it to grow a little bigger. Show me your blood Muscular shouted transferring all his muscle fibers to his arms, pushing Izuku down. You're blued. As Izuku struggled to push back, he felt a hand placing its fingers between his. He looked to the right to see Izumi using her non-broken left hand to hold his. I will not let my brother die. She said as she squeezed it tighter causing something surprising to happen. His Rasengan started to emit electricity like full cowling, while growing to an enormous size. Suddenly, he felt something pushing him from behind. He looked behind him to see Kota using one hand to push him while using the other to push Izumi. Let's go Carapace Kota screamed with tears in his eyes. Kota, Izumi Izuku said looking at them desperately trying to help him. He then turned back to the villain and pushed harder. Ah. As his foot pushed deep into the ground, Muscular struggled to push back as his muscle fibers began to disintegrate bits by bits. I impossible Muscular mentally shouted once he started to feel it coming closer to his face. Everyone who was fighting down the mountain looked up at the bright glow coming from where they were. Supreme. Izuku shouted. One for all. Izumi shouted. The Sengen Kota shouted as loud as he can. The Rasengan they made released itself pushing Muscular into the air like a rocket, while they got pushed from the impact causing all three of their backsides to hit the mountain wall. Ay ay ay. Muscular screamed as he slowly disintegrated as the Rasengan flew into the air and exploded into green light. The three of them sat there as they see green sparkles fall from where Muscular was destroyed. They took the time to breathe. I can't believe we did it, Izumi said holding her broken hand. We're alive, Koda said trying to get up, but can't due to being pushed into a rocky mountain. And it's thanks to you guys. If it wasn't for you, we'd all be dead he said taking deep breaths. You're both heroes. Both Izumi and Koda looked at each other before looking at Izuku. No big brother, she said causing Izuku to turn his head. You're a hero, Koda said trying to form a smile. Once Izuku heard those words, tears began building up in his eyes. He used his bruised up and wiped his face. I guess I am, he said smiling while looking at the smoke rising from the forest. He placed his hand on the wall he was leaning on to help support himself to stand up. Then as a hero, my work's not done yet. Using all the energy they had left, Izuku, Izumi, and Kota stood up from where they were sitting and walked up to the cliffs to see the smoke rising up in the air. This is crazy. Attacking these students just to get two of them? Izuku said clenching his bruised up hand. Big brother, we gotta do something, she said holding her crushed hand. No way. We need to get you and Kota to Izawa, Izuku said. He's probably in one of the camp buildings. Some of my friends were to do extra classes, Izumi explained. So we just need to get back to camp. Izuku said as he called forth his Adachi. Good thing I've been there. He slashed the air causing a portal to form. So cool, Kota said. But brother, they'll see your face, she said reminding him that his face and hair are revealed. Izuku looked at his ring as it sparked a malfunction. It doesn't matter. Let's go guys, Izuku said as he ran through the portal. You have such a cool brother, Kota said to Izumi as he followed him through the portal. I sure do, she said following through. At one of the buildings of the training camp, Azawa was preoccupied fighting a blue flame villain. He didn't realize that the villain he was fighting was a fake. The 1B teacher, Vlad King, watched over the students who had remedial classes. What the heck's going on out there? Ijiro asked. His question was answered when the door of the class was burst open. Everyone in the room got their quirks ready once they saw the patched up villain standing at the doorway. This wasn't part of my agenda, the villain said igniting his hands with blue flames. But I think the boss will be okay with this. Don't underestimate us heroes villain, Vlad King said prepping to attack. That's where you're wrong, Dobby said as his hands grew brighter. Cause you already lost. Just as he was about to throw his fire, he felt something sharp wrap around his hand, causing him to scream in pain. Besides him, the students and Vlad King looked at his wrist to see a cackling flaming head sphere weight with spiked ridges wrapped tight around it. He's right, a voice said behind him. Don't underestimate us heroes. Everyone looked behind him to see Izumi, Koda, and Carapace, whose identity is revealed as Izuku to everyone due to his mask ripped, holding the end of the chain. Izuku. Kirishima said staring at him with wide eyes as he stared at the costume he was wearing. Their Carapace Ashido said in surprise. Yup. Now, get over here Izuku shouted as he yanked Dobby away from the door of the classroom and slam him into the wall behind them. What he didn't expect was for him to splat into mud upon impact. Mud. Must have been a fake. 
He turned to everyone to see them still staring in shock. Siro was the first one to say something. Midoriya. Your arm. He said looking past Izuku. Everyone focused their gaze on Izumi who was holding her limp arm. My god, are okay? Ashido asked running up to her. I'm fine, we're both fine, Izumi said referring to her and Kota. Yeah, her big brother saved us, Kota said looking at Izuku as he retracted his weapon. I'm just glad you're all safe, Izuku said before turning to Vlad King. So all this time the teenage vigilante has been a camp, the pro hero said looking at Izuku. You know I'm gonna arrest you right? I know but now's not the time, said Izuku. Where's Azawa and Mandalay? They need to know something. What? Asked Vlad King. The villains. They're not here to just attack. They're here for two of UA's students, he said before turning to Izumi. My sister and Kachin. Everyone except for Izuku, Koda and Izumi gasped when they heard that, especially Kirishima. Like hell, I'm gonna let that happen. Kirishima said as he tried to run away. Except he was cut off by a sword blocking his path. He looked at Izuku who was holding his Adachi in front of him. You're not going anywhere. My sister nearly died trying to fight one of these villains, he said while lowering his sword. I need you guys to get her to a hospital and contact All Might. Ha! And how do you suppose we supposed to do that? A certain annoying blonde by the name of Manama said. As much as I don't agree with him, he has a point. We don't have our phones and we're miles away from the nearest hospital, Kaminari said. Izuku placed a hand under his chin while placing his sword on his back thinking before an idea popped into his mind. I got an idea, he said before turning towards everyone. Can you guys swim? Of course, we can swim. Why? Ashido asked confused. Mr. Vlad King, Koda, you might want to step back, he said getting his sword ready. Once they did, at lightning speed, Izuku swiped his sword on the ground around everyone into a circle. Guys, tell All Might exactly what's going on and Izumi, go straight to recovery girl. Wait, what do you? Izumi said before a bright blue glow was shown below everyone. It didn't take them long before they realized that he formed a portal underneath them. One by one everyone fell through the floor. Once the portal closed, the only ones left in the building were Izuku, Koda, and Vlad King. You. Vlad King said before grabbing Izuku by the collar and bringing him to close to his face. What did you do to my students? Calm down. I just sent them back to town, he said to the teacher. It's best we evacuate everyone to avoid less damage, and my portals can do it. Understanding what he means, the pro hero lets go of him. So where exactly did you send them, Vlad King asked. Well. Izuku said trailing off his words. In a certain location, a blue portal opened up in the air. From there, seven students fell out screaming for their lives. Suddenly they both landed in what seemed to be water. Using their strength they all swam to the top. What the? Where are we? Kaminari said while supporting Izumi who still has her arm broken. And why are we in water? Mina said trying to shake as much out of her hair. Everyone to the chance to look around their surroundings to see where they are. Despite it being dark, after looking at the different sceneries and the boat that was right next to them, Kirishima was able to figure out where they are. Eyes, I think we're at the USJ. He said trying to stay above the water. So that vigilante sent us all the way here. Why? Manama said in a normal voice for once. To keep us away from the danger, Izumi said while smiling. That's just like my brother. But we're still a few miles from UA, Sato said. How are we gonna alert them? As if on cue, red alarms began emerging from the walls of the building. Intruder alert intruder alert intruders are located in the flood zone repeat intruders located in the flood zone. That's one way, Ashido said as the alarms kept going. Back at the training camp, Izuku, Koda, and Vlad King ran outside the building to meet up with Eraserhead. Eraserhead. Vlad King shouted gaining the hero's attention. Vlad. You were supposed to be protecting the... He said until he noticed Koda and Izuku in his ripped up suit. I knew it. You are the vigilante. I know sir and I'm sorry I couldn't keep my promise, Izuku said. But I had no choice. Koda would have been murdered if I hadn't done something. Azawa looked at Koda who nodded. Not only that, he protected the students from that fire villain, Vlad King said. I don't say this a lot but, he truly is a hero. So where are the students? Azawa said noticing they're the only three that came out. Don't worry, Izuku said pulling out his Adachi. I teleported them to the USJ. The USJ? Azawa asked surprised. It's the only place I've been to that's the closest to UA. That's how my portal power works, Izuku explained. I see. Then we're definitely gonna need your help, Azawa said understanding. Can you help evacuate the students? I'll look after Koda. I'll do what I can sir, Izuku said as he put away his Adachi and started to run off deep into the forest. Sir, do you think he'll be okay? Koda asked as he watched Izuku disappear into the night. 
He has already proven himself to be a hero, he said watching the vigilante run. And to be my student. While running ninja style, Izuku ended up in an open area to see the pussycats fighting two villains, one that looks like a lizard and one with big lips. I do this in the name of Stain. The lizard guy, Spinner, said slammed his swords on the ground in an attempt to crush Mandalay. He was about to lift it up again when a sharp sword flew past him knocking the sword out of his hands. At lightning speed, Izuku teleported to where the sword was with his other katana in his hand. That's enough. Izuku said standing between the hero and the villains. Spinner's eyes went wide at who he was standing in front of him. You. You're the one who defeated Stain. Spinner said seeing Izuku in his costume. But you're just a kid. Why would he show respect for you? I may not understand Stain's motives, but I do understand the respect for heroes, Izuku said getting into a fighting position. You're no better than he was. Shut up. These are false heroes. He said facing Izuku pointing his blades to him. And so are you. Stain rushed towards him and tried to slash him. Using his katanas, he blocked his blade attack and kicked him in his stomach, pushing him back a few distances. That ain't nothing. It's like you don't even know how to use a swo. He said before coughing up some air. He looked to his stomach to see Izuku pushing the pommel of his sword deep into his stomach. H how. Did. You. As Spinner fell to the ground, Izuku turned his head to Magni while switching to his tonfas. You want some too? I'm ready he said as red eyes grew dangerously brighter while his fist projected bigger. Magni felt herself shake in place at how freighting he looked. Unfortunately, she tried to run away only to be met with a giant paw in the face. Izuku looked to the villain to see her knock out by Tiger. Okay, now that was very cool, Izuku said, surprised by Tiger's quick attack. He turned to see Mandalay walking up to him while holding her arms. I had a feeling you were more than just a pizza boy. You're the vigilante, she said looking at the boy. He, he, yeah, Izuku said scratching the back of his neck. Mandalay turned her head to the passed out spinner. Did you kill him? Mandalay asked hoping he didn't do anything ruthless. Nah, he's just passed out. It's an old technique my master taught me, Izuku explained. He put away his tonfas to show he's not gonna attack. Mandalay, the villains are here for Izumi Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo. I've already sent Izumi and some of her classmates back to the city for their protection. Eraser had told me to use my portal powers to evacuate everyone off the campgrounds. Can you use your telepathy to warn everyone? Okay, but you're not thinking of going on your own. She said getting ready to use her quirk. I got it, he said taking out his adachi and running into the forest. That kid's got spunk. Still going even though people can't see his face, Tiger said looking as he disappears from sight. I can see why Azawa had eyes for him, Mandalay said prepping to send the message. Running ninja style, Izuku ran through the forest to find the rest of the students. While searching, he bumped into a few students like Yeoi Rozu and most of the students from 1B who defeated some of the villains. Like what he did to the students who needed to take remedial classes, he sent them all to the USJ where they could at least cool off from all the fighting. While running he heard some kind of commotion behind some bushes. Die. A voice said causing him to stop in place. Patching you idiot, Izuku said since he had a feeling he wouldn't listen. Using his speed, he ran toward his old friend's scream. He arrived to see Bakugo and Todoroki carrying an unconscious person. Show me. Sweet flesh, the villain known as Moonfish said as he unleashed blades from his teeth toward the boys. Luckily for them, Izuku used his katanas and knocked them away. You made it just in time, he said putting away his swords. Izuku. Todoroki said looking at the suit he was wearing. Deku your carapace. Bakugo said seeing his old friend in a ripped up version of his suit. Yeah, yeah, I know and I'm sorry, he said before summoning his adachi. What? For hiding that you're a vigilante. Bakugo said readying his explosions. No, for this, he said before running at blinding speed around the boys forming a portal underneath them. What in the? Bakugo said before falling through the portal with Todoroki. What are you? Well actually, not sorry, was the last thing Bakugo heard before he and Todoroki fell through the portal and disappeared. You? What have you done? Moonfish shouted recovering from his early attack. If I can't have their flesh, I'll have to deal with yours. In response, Izuku summoned his katanas and got ready to fight, until a large roar gained both of their attention. The two turned their heads to see one of 1A's classmates Mizo Shoji, running in their direction as if he were being chazzed. Though Koyami. Take control of Dark Shadow. He said running past the two. What in the? Both thought until their thoughts were interrupted by the sounds of destruction coming in their direction. They both looked in the direction to see a humongous shadowy monster-like being going on a rampage. Wait, I know this quirk, Izuku said as he stared at the red-eyed beast going on a rampage. Don't get my way, Moonfish screamed as he unleashed multiple teeth at him. Unfortunately, the blades barely affected it. 
Izuku went on the defensive when he saw the monster lift its claw to attack. As the claw went down, it didn't strike Izuku, but instead the villain who unleashed his crazy teeth. You insignificant bug Dark Shadow shouted as he crushed the villain with his hands breaking all his teeth. As he lifted up his claws, Moonfish laid there unconscious in the handprint hole Dark Shadow left behind. Well, that problem took care of himself, Izuku said lowering his swords and his guard. He didn't realize that was a mistake until he felt a huge force strike him from behind, launching him from where he was in a nearby tree. Ah! He screamed in pain from his back. Shoji ran to where he was and helped him sit up. You okay? Shoji asked concerned about him despite Izuku's mask being destroyed revealing his face. Yeah, I received worse from training with my master, Izuku said standing to his feet and using his swords to support him. He looked at Dark Shadow's body and noticed something inside him. It was his owner Fumikage Tokoyami, trying to regain control of him. H help me. And need light, Izuku said in between voices. That's when Izuku remembered something at the sports festival. During the cavalry battle, he noticed how Dark Shadow was weak against Bakugo's explosions. I was hoping to find either Bakugo or Todoroki so they can shine some light in him with their quirks, Shoji said as Dark Shadow continued his rampage. Izuku felt a little regret that he sent them away, but knew that hope wasn't lost. Sorry, but I sent both of them back home, since the villains were after Bakugo, he said to Shoji. But luckily, they're not the only ones who can make fire. Before Shoki could question, Izuku's eyes shifted from blue to orange and summoned his Kusari Fundo. Though Koyami, bear with it for a while. Izuku shouted as he began spinning at full speed, creating a fire tornado. The light produced from his flames calmed Dark Shadow back into its weakened state. Izuku and Shoji ran towards Tokoyami who knelt down on the ground trying to catch his breath. Tokoyami, you okay? Shoji asked. Yeah, I am fine, he said before raising his to look at Izuku. Thank you. No problem, he said shifting his eyes back to blue and switching to his Adachi. He swiped the air and opened a portal. Shoji, this will lead you back to the USJ. Take Tokoyami to recovery girl ASAP. Knowing he could trust him, Shoji helped up Tokoyami and carried him toward the portal. What? About you? Tokoyami asked Izuku. My girlfriend's still out there, Izuku said looking into the forest. I gotta save her. Iraka. Shoji asked earning a nod from the vigilante. Well then, good luck, Carapace. Once the two walked through the portal, it closed into a spark. Ah, Sayu. A loud scream erupted from the forest. Izuku knew very well who that scream belonged to. The Chako Izuku shouted as he ran full speed in the direction of her voice. In a deep part of the forest, Yuraka and Asui were fighting a crazy female villain who goes by the name Himiko Toga. As she rushed toward the two with knives in her hand, Asui used her tongue to throw Yuraka out of the way telling her to run. But just as she was about to, the crazy girl used the knife to slash her tongue. Atsu Yuraka screamed in fear for her friend. Su what a cute name. I'll call her that too. Toga squealed in excitement while holding her knives close to her face. Shut up. Only her friends are allowed to call her that. Yuraka screamed back at her. Really? She said before throwing her knives and pinning Asui by the hair to a tree. Then I guess we'll just have to be friends. Yuraka clenched her fist and teeth together as a growl escaped from her mouth. The last time she felt this angry was when she fraught Izumi at the sports festival. But the psychopath like you? She said reaching into her back pocket and pulling out something metal. Like hell, we would. That language. Toga said with a maniacal laugh before launching herself towards Yuraka. We just have to be friends. Waiting for the right time, once Toga was close enough, she combined the training she had with Gunhead and her boyfriend, and moved quickly out of the way before pinning her limbs and slamming her down on the ground. Wow, you're so fast and flexible, Toga said complimenting Yuraka. I think I might be in love. Shut up. You know nothing about love you maniac. Yuraka shouted back at her. Oh. Does that mean, you have a crush on someone? Toga said with a face of excitement. Yuraka simply closed her eyes and sighed. No, I don't have a crush on someone, she said before her ninja sense began tingling at her legs. Without even opening her eyes, she swiped her hand at blinding speed, cutting a tube that had a string attached to it. She jumped off Toga and moved a few feet back. Togo looked at the syringe she was holding to see if it was completely cut off. Huh? How did you? She said before realizing Yuraka was holding some kind of weapon in her hand. I don't have a crush on anyone. She said before fanning herself and going into a stance. Because I already have an amazing boyfriend. Yuraka then spun herself and threw the Tessin in the direction of Toga. The weapon however flew past her only cutting a piece of the villain's hair and flying into the dark forest. Toga in response gave a crazy laugh. What a pretty blade. Maybe I should use it to cut you up when I find it, Toga said taking out two more blades. 
Yuraka simply smiled with her hair covering her eyes. Maybe you shouldn't underestimate me. Before raising her for Toga to see her confident face. Because I missed on purpose. Before Toga could even respond, the Tessin came flying out of the darkness from behind her and struck the machine that was on her back, causing it to crack. The crack got bigger until the whole machine broke releasing a lot of blood, causing both Yuraka and Asui, who still pinned onto the tree to stare with wide eyes. Blood? They both thought at the same time. New oh my blood Toga screamed as she knelt on the ground and tried scooping up the blood. Unfortunately for her, most of it soaked into the dirt. Using this chance, Yuraka went and pulled the knives out of Asui's hair releasing her. Achako. Where'd you get that weapon? Asui asked surprised she would even have a weapon that sharp. All Yuraka could do was simply laugh nervously. You could say, a certain someone told me that an enemy could be around any corner, she said chuckling. You. A voice said interrupting them. The two girls looked in the direction of the voice to see Toga standing up with a broken machine on her back releasing more blood as she moved. She turned to face them showing a face that nearly scared the living daylights out of them. I'll kill you, she whispered before launching herself like a rocket. I'll kill you both. Iraka could have jumped out of the way and grabbed her weapon, but she knew it would leave Asui vulnerable. All she could do was close her eyes, hug her and brace for impact. Unfortunately, she didn't feel anything. As if the world was going in slow motion, she opened her eyes to see the one person she knew would come to the rescue. Her boyfriend, Izuku, was currently delivering an air kick ride in Toga's face. As time sped back, Toga rolled on the ground before being knocked into a tree. You girls okay? Izuku asked with his hair blowing in the wind. Izuku you idiot, what took you so long? Yuraka said while smiling. Had to help eraser head clean up, he responded. So you're the famous boyfriend of my friend Ichako, Toga said standing up and gaining Izuku's attention. I'm gonna enjoy seeing such a handsome guy like you bleed. I'm flattered but anyone who hurts Ichako. He said summoning his staff. Will have to deal with me. Oh, Izuku. You're like so cool. Toga shouted before rushing towards him. I love you. Izuku simply sighed stepped out of the way, used the tip of his staff, and struck her in a vital spot in her neck, knocking her out unconscious. As she fell face down to the ground, Izuku spun his staff in style. Sorry, but I already have a girlfriend, he said turning his head to Yuraka. And she's way past cool. After restraining the Yandira villain to a tree, Izuku took up the Yuraka's tessin and walked towards the girls. He really showed her who's boss Haacha. Izuku said handing her the weapon. Well, I did have a good teacher, she said sticking out her tongue. So Ichako? Asui said walking up to them. I always thought your boyfriend was hiding something, but I never thought you'd be dating a vigilante. Iraka was so distracted by the crazy girl that she didn't realize that Asui was seeing Izuku without his mask. Izuku, your mask, Iraka said looking at his battered suit down and up. Your arm. Meh, it's getting better, he said clenching it despite still feeling a bit of sting from every squeeze. Sorry to interrupt, but we have to make sure Bakugo and your sister are safe, Asui said with a finger to her lip. It's okay, I teleported everyone back to town. They're safe he said. Thank goodness, Asui said sighing in relief. Thanks, Deku. Deku? Izuku said shocked by that name. Sorry, it's just that, I overheard Izumi and Bakugo talking about you yesterday, she said. They mentioned how they used to call you Deku when you were kids. The day now, Izuku said lowering his head remembering how he was called that insulting name. I heard Bakugo say he used to call you that because you were defenseless, Asui said causing Izuku to clench his fist as painful memories began to come into his head. But your sister said she called you that because you were determined. Determined to become a hero. Izuku's eyes widened when he heard that. His own sister, the one who treated him like trash for most of his life, actually had faith in him and never showed it. Determined Izuku. Deku. I kinda like it, Yuraka said smiling at Izuku. I think it'd make a better hero name now. Izuku smiled as tears built up in his eyes. In truth, part of him really misses the younger sister that he loved so much. All those times she tried to reconcile with him, the sister part of him kept expanding wanting to forgive. Now he finally understands how she feels. Yeah, I think it does, he said wiping his eyes. Plus, it does sound kinda cute, Yuraka said before poking his nose. Deku, the half-shell hero. Achako, not in front of your friend, Izuku said blushing while holding his nose. I think we should head back to camp before anything else. Asui said before being cut off by something metal falling onto the ground in front of them. Izuku looked closely at the object before realizing what it was. Crap, grenade. Izuku quickly said before it exploded in a bright flash blinding his eyes. It took him 10 seconds to recover from it as he robbed and tried to open his eyes. As he opened his eyes wide, he looked around and noticed Yuraka and Asui were gone. 
Ichako Asui Izuku said spinning himself in place looking for the two. If you looking for the ladies. A voice from above him said. He raised his head to see a man wearing a white mask with a weird black geometric design, holding two blue marbles in his hand. They're right here. We may not have gotten our intended targets, but I think the boss would happy if we take some UA girls as a hostage, he said throwing them up and grabbing them. Izuku's eyes grew bright blue in anger as he summoned his katanas and pointed one of them at the villain. Give them back or I'll slice up not just that fancy suit of yours, but your face too, Izuku threatened. His eyes widened when he noticed a purple portal open in the air behind the villain. Sorry kid, but this is where I take my leave, he said, tipping his top hat and slowly backing up into the portal. Before his body could even touch it, a flash of fire shot through the air and nearly hitting him. What in the? Both Izuku and him looked up to see what looked like a meteor heading in their direction. Izuku squinted his eyes to try to get a better look until the meteor began making a loud shout. Hold it right there you villain. It shouted. Looking very closely, once Izuku a bit of blue and some skin, he realized full well who it was. Endeavor Izuku shouted mentally. Whoops, I really overstayed my welcome, Compra said before jumping through the portal with the marbles in his hands. Oh no, you don't. Izuku in response threw one of his katanas through the portal before it closed. As he fell to his knees trying to catch his breath, Endeavor lowered himself like a rocket. You, I remember you. Endeavor said walking towards Izuku. You're the vigilante I met in Hosu. You look no older than my son. Endeavor, how'd you get here? Izuku said taking deep breaths. I received an emergency alert from UA and was told by the students what happened here, he said standing before the young vigilante. I was even told it was you who saved all the students and my son. Not all of them, Izuku said standing up to his feet. Two female students were captured by a villain. I see, Endeavor said putting a hand under his chin. We'll need to form a rescue squad and find a way to track them down. No need to try and track them, Izuku said holding up his katana. There was a reason I threw only one of my swords. Hmm? Endeavor said with an eyebrow raised. Sir, I understand you don't like taking orders, but this is important, Izuku said gaining the flame hero's full attention. Once we finish rounding up the villains here, gather up the strongest heroes as you can. We're gonna infiltrate the League of Villains hideout. You mean, you know where they are Endeavor said in surprise. Let's just say, my sword knows where they are, Izuku said. I'll explain more once we're ready to strike. Should you really be doing this kid? You're technically still a wanted vigilante, Endeavor said before looking up and down at his suit and his arms. Plus, both your arm and your suit are all busted up. You should see a doctor. Izuku lifted his bruised hand and clenched it. He then ripped the scarf that was around his neck and wrapped it around his arm bandaging it. Those bastards took the girl that I love, he said before turning to the hero holding out his sword. If saving her and her friend means losing an arm, that I'll gladly do it. Endeavor couldn't help but be impressed by Isaac's determination and courage. Most kids his age would just follow adults' instructions, especially when they're badly injured. Endeavor turned and faced the direction where Toga was restrained. Don't tell anyone I told you this. He said walking away. But you really do have the heart of a hero. Izuku's heart began to feel light when he heard that. Hearing that from the most arrogant and bad-tempered hero in Japan made him believe that he was really making a name for himself. Two one half hours later. At an unknown bar location, two figures were strapped to chairs with bags over their heads. WH where am I? One of them said. And why is it so dark? Achako? Is that you? The other figure said. Sue? Are you okay? What happened? The one who was called Achako said. Would you two shut up already? A loud voice shouted causing the two girls to stop talking. At the same time, the bags that were covering their heads were yanked off them. The two took time to open their eyes due to the light blinding them after being in the dark for a while. Once their eyes opened they were met with an unexpected sight. They were in some kind of bar, strapped up to chairs surrounded by the same villains that they saw attacking the camp. So we meet again girly, a man sitting on a stool said. Yuraka and Asui turned their heads to see two figures they could never forget. Oh no. Not them, Yuraka mentally said as she tried to reach into her back pocket, hoping to find a shuriken to cut the ropes that were tying her hands. Looking for these. The man said holding up four shurikens in his hands. I had Kuriguri check the two of you for anything you'd be hiding. And to think, you possess the same weapons that vigilantes used to cut my arm. He then turned himself on the stool to reveal himself with the hand mask on his face. Tell me, girl. How did you get these? You know who that vigilante is do you? The leader Shigaraki said. Yuraka looked at Asui with a certain face. Asui knew what it meant and stayed quiet, not wanting to rat out the identity of her boyfriend. All I know is that if he was here right now, he'd use his swords and help add more hands to your collection, Yuraka mocked causing the villain to grit his teeth behind his mask. 
So I suggest you let us go before something bad happens to you. This girl's got guts, Dobby said. No wonder she was able to take on Toga. Well, she won't be smiling after I leave a mark on her face for mocking me, Shigaraki said walking towards the girls. He then placed both his hands under their chin, lifting them up while holding his index finger out. Though trying to be brave, the two were scared on the inside they saw what his quirk could do back at the USJ. Don't worry, it will only be a tap, he said crazily as he brought his finger close to their face. Both girls closed their eyes bracing themselves for the pain. Suddenly the door opened causing Shigaraki to stop in place. The door revealed Mr. Compress who was using one hand to hold his shoulder that was for some reason bleeding while using the other to hold an object. Sorry to interrupt sir, but it took a while to get that sword out of my shoulder, he said rubbing his wound. Sword? Shigaraki asked confused. Yeah, that green-haired kid threw his sword at me while I was walking through the portal, he said holding up the sword with a blue hilt. Is Toga here? I think she'd want this. Wait, isn't that? Yuraka mentally said looking closely at the sword until her eyes widened when she recognized it. Wait Shigaraki. I've seen that sword before, Grigori said. Didn't that vigilante use it at the USJ too? Before he could even finish, Shigaraki realized what it was. Crap. Compress get rid of it before. Shigaraki screamed too late because the blade of the sword Kurijiri was holding began to glow with runes. With a flash of blue light, a figure appeared into the room like lightning holding the hilt of the sword while having another in hand. Slowly he raised his head revealing his face and showing his blue glowing eyes. Thanks for holding on to this, Izuku said making the katana the villain was holding disappear and converting the one he was holding into his adachi. Swiping it in the air, a portal opened up. Guriguri, warp us out of here. Shigaraki yelled just before what looked like branches stretched through the portal. Lacquered chain prison Kamui Woods shouted as he jumped out of the portal and pinned the purple mist villain to the wall, along with all the villains to the wall. You think these things can hold me? Dobby said as he was about to ignite his flames, not before getting kicked in the head by the old swift hero, Gran Torino, who jetted himself through Izuku's portal knocking him out. Nice one sir, Izuku said paying respect to the elder. You and your family really love getting yourselves in trouble, he said lowering down. As he touched the ground, one last person came out of the portal before it closed. Standing proudly in his tall and muscular form, he walked toward the villains. Looks like you were correct young man, he said playing the part that he doesn't know Izuku. The villains were here. Thank you. Izuku simply looked down with a frown, finding it to be even hard to talk to his father for so long. No thanks needed, he said walking to Yuraka and Asui. Using this chance, he used his adachi to cut the binds that were holding Yuraka and Asui. You two okay? Izuku asked as the two rubbed their wrists from the tightness of their binds. Take me out for dinner later, and then I'll feel a whole lot better, Yuraka jokingly said causing Izuku to chuckle a little. I am thankful for the save, Asui said before asking a question. But how did you get the heroes to help? I mean, you're technically a vigilante. Izuku simply paced his sword on his shoulder while scratching the back of his neck and laughing. Believe me, it wasn't easy, he said nervously as he began to explain himself. Do one half hours earlier. In a conference room, a bunch of heroes including Endeavor, Best Genist, Mount Lady, Gang Orca, Tiger, Kamui Woods, Gran Torino, Edshot, and a couple of police stood there waiting for one more person to arrive. DCH where the heck is he, Endeavor asked stomping his foot. You know him, he always likes to make it dramatic. Gran Torino said before the door opened wide and a large man wearing American colors burst through the door. I am here. Coming through the door with style. The one and only All Might said bursting through the door, causing most of the heroes in the room to groan in annoyance. Figures Endeavor said seeing his rival for the number one hero. Endeavor. It's rare for you to be calling all of us together, All Might said walking up to him. Might I ask what's going on? Endeavor sighed before speaking. I'm sure you're fully aware that some of your students from UA got attacked by the League of Villains, Endeavor said, causing some gasps from the others. Despite having a smile, All Might lower his head. Yes, a few are recovering in the hospital right now, he said with pain in his voice, due to the fact that his daughter was one of the students who were hospitalized. Endeavor then turned to face all the other heroes. During the attack, two female students got taken by one of the villains, Endeavor announced causing everyone to gasp in fear again. Fortunately, we have a way to track them down. How? We've been trying to track them for a month now. Were you able to pin a tracker on them? Gran Torino asked surprised. I didn't. Endeavor said before stepping out the way so everyone can face the door. He did. Upon cue, the door opened revealing Izuku still holding his sword in his wrapped up right hand. He was still in his suit, but the mask piece was still ripped off. 
The heroes in the room stared at the boy in shock, not only because he was a vigilante and because his face was revealed, but how battered and ripped up his suit was. No one in the room was more shocked than All Might, because he knew very well who he is now that his face has been revealed. Izuku. He whispered just loud enough for him to hear. In response, Izuku stopped in front of him and turned to look at him briefly. Not only was All Might surprised to see his son, but to see his eyes blue in the shape of the Hamato symbol. He wanted to know what happened to him after so long. After five seconds of exchanging eye contact, he continued walking past him until he reached the top of the room. Hello, Izuku started with a bit of nervousness due to the fact he was standing in front of the top tier. I guess I don't need to introduce myself since as you can see, I'm the vigilante you know as Carapace. You mean to tell us, you called us out here because of some illegal kid? Mount Lady said with annoyance to Endeavor. All Might in response gritted his teeth at how she talked about his son. This illegal kid was able to fight off most of the League of Villains on his own, Endeavor said defending Izuku. What he may do may be against the law, but he has proven that he'd be willing to risk his life for people. The hero stayed silent after hearing that and looked at Izuku again. They could tell by his scratched up face and his broken down costume that he has been in rough battles. Gran Torino then walked up to Izuku and looked up at the boy. Like father, like son, he whispered to Izuku causing him to blush while turning his head away in embarrassment, not wanting to be compared to his father. Gran Torino then spoke loud enough for everyone to hear. So, Endeavor said you know a way to track them. Izuku nodded his head before taking out his T-phone and handing it to the old pro. While I was evacuating everyone, I helped two students fight off a Nomu with a chainsaw quirk, Izuku explained causing them to gasp. During the fight, I guessed it felt overwhelmed so it tried to run away. Before it could, I helped one of the students place a mini tracker on it. Some of the heroes gathered around Gran Torino to see the blinking dot on the map. And this will lead up to the villain's base. Best genist asked. No. Bet you anything, it's the factory where they produce the Nomus, Izuku explained. I doubt they'd carry a Nomu everywhere they go. If they did, it'd be easier. But, what about the villains? Kamui Woods asked. In response, Izuku lifted up his katana. One of my abilities is that I can teleport myself or anyone holding one of my swords to the location of the other, he explained. Okay. So. Mount Lady said not getting. As you heard from Endeavor, two students were captured and escaped through a portal, Izuku continued. Before he could escape, I threw one of my blades into the portal, most likely hitting him in the shoulder. So you're saying if the League has your blade? All Might said understanding. I can teleport myself to where it is, Izuku said finishing his sentence. Then that settles it, Endeavor said. One team will follow the kid to the League's hideout while the other head towards the factory. With everyone in agreement, Best Genist, Gang Orca, Mount Lady and Tiger headed out with Izuku's T-phone towards the factory. Everyone else in the room readied themselves for what Izuku was about to do. Okay, I'm about to teleport, he said before turning to Kamui Woods. Mr. Woods, when I blew portal open, use your prison technique. Though not understanding what he means, he nodded his head in agreement. Izuku then stuck his sword to the ground as blue runes began generating up the blade. And like a flash of light, he disappeared. Present. With the villains tied up and trapped in Kamui Wood's quirk, All Might walked up to Shigaraki and placed both his hands on his hips. It's over Shigaraki, you've lost, All Might said. Yuraka and Asui stood behind Izuku as he held his Adachi in case they tried something. Endeavor and the police have this place surrounded so there's no escape. No. Curse you All Might. Master, please. Help me. Shigaraki screamed as he struggled in his grasp. Master. Both Izuku and All Might asked at the same time. Suddenly, out of nowhere several Nomu suddenly appear from portals made of black liquid. Some appeared outside and attacked Endeavor and the police outside. Crap, it's an ambush, Izuku said turning to check on Asui and Yuraka, only to see them choking. Yuraka. Asui. What's hap? Feeling something clogged in his neck, he dropped his Adachi causing it to disappear when it hit the ground. As he tried to cough it up, black liquid spills from his, Yuraka, and Asui's mouth. Not just them, but the same liquid spilled from the villain's mouth. Seeing the villain slowly warp away, All Might turned to Izuku and tried to grab him. Izuku saw this and tried to stretch his hand out too. Time moved slowly as they reached each other. Unfortunately, All Might wasn't able to make it in time, as the villains, Asui, Yuraka and Izuku disappeared from the building, leaving the heroes to deal with the Nomu. All Might clenched his teeth in anger at the thought of his son being taken away again. Don't worry boy, that kid can handle himself, Gran Torino said reassuring him while getting into a fighting position. All Might, that quirk. Yes, it's him, All Might said as he performed an Oklahoma smash on the Nobu. In a desolated and destroyed area, far away from the villain's hideout, a black sludge appeared. 
As it dissipated, Izuku took deep breaths trying his best to breathe. Wh what happened? Izuku said crouching down with his hands on his legs. Ah. It's very nice to meet you Carapace, a sinister voice said causing Izuku to freeze in fear. By the way, the person talked, it sounded venomous and murderous. His ninja senses never felt such an aura before. Without even lifting his head, he looked around to see something that made his eyes widen in fear. Mount Lady, Gang Orca, and especially Genist, were all lying on the ground beaten up and nearly killed due to all the blood. Bree Pros defeated so easily. He asked as he moved his eyeballs to the front to see Black Shoes standing in front of him. Though he didn't want to do this, he slowly raised his head trailing up the shoes to a black suit until he was able to see the head. Except the head was wearing a mask covering his entire face. H how do you can know me? Izuku said with so much fear in his voice. His ninja sense was telling him to use his adachi and run, but his legs were frozen and he just can't get himself to use his powers. My successor, Shigaraki, told me everything. Such as, you defeating one of my gnomas and always thwarting our plans, he explained with a voice that shot out venom every single time he speaks. Sweat was trailing down Izuku's face now. If he was able to defeat Mount Lady and the number 3 hero, then what can he do? Izuku was so distracted by the fear that he didn't see his hand reach for his neck until it was too late. The villain in the mask held Izuku up in the air as he struggled to break free. Just. Who are. You. Izuku said choking between breaths. Since you're about to die, I might as well tell you, he said before leaning close to his ear. All for one. Izuku's eyes widened in more fear upon hearing that name. All for one held him out again and tightened the grip around his neck. Izuku clenched his teeth and he felt his windpipes being crushed. But before all for one could even continue, the sound of sludge then came up behind them. Turning his head, he saw Yuraka and Asui come out of them. What happened? Where are we? Asui asked looking left and right. I don't know, but we gotta. Yuraka said until she looked around and saw the horrifying sight in front of her. Asui followed Yuraka's gaze, and her eyes widened in horror. This was one of the few times that her emotionless face changed showing how scared she was. All for one turned his head while releasing the grip off Izuku's neck. Ah. I was hoping Shigaraki would capture Katsuki Bakugo. But I guess capturing two students of All Might would be good enough to gain his attention, All for One said. Izuku's eyes finally got serious as they shined red. Using the hands he used to hold All for One's hand, he summoned his say and stabbed both of them in his arms. Ghhhh. All for One screamed as he released his grip dropping Izuku to the ground. Once his foot touched, he pushed backward until he stood in front of Yuraka and Asui. As All for One pulled the Sei out of his hands, they both disappeared as Izuku shifted to Tech Jutsu, summoned his staff, and stood in defense position. Izuku? Yuraka asked seeing the way he held his staff. The way his hands were shaking, it wasn't like him at all. She was getting very worried. Achako, I think he's scared, Asui said. I can see why, Yuraka said, pointing in the direction of the fallen heroes. That man took down the top rows. Asui said getting even more scared as she turned her direction toward the man that was holding Izuku. He began to levitate off the ground like he was some kind of god. What a fascinating quirk you have, all for one said to Izuku. The ability to call forth weapons. I think it would make a wonderful addition to my collection. You mean? Izuku said shaking in his costume. You steal quirks. Why of course, he said in a menacing voice. Suddenly, more black sludges appeared around them. As they dissipated, it revealed the rest of the League of Villains. Whoa what was that? I love it twice said screaming in excitement. Them master, Shigaraki said walking up to the villain. I'm sorry I failed both times. All for one instead levitated towards him and placed a hand on his head. No worries, there's always next time, he said before raising his head to the sky. Ah, speaking of next time. Like a meteorite falling from the sky, All Might came storming down and delivered a punch at All for one which he was able to catch with one hand, causing a large rift of wind that blew away mostly everyone around them. I'll have you return my son and students, all for one All Might shouted. All Might, we meet again. So that's your son. All for one said looking at Izuku who was helping Yuraka and Asui stand up. Well, let's see if you can live up to your name and project him. Using his other hand, his fingers shot out red tendrils towards Izuku. In self-defense, Izuku summoned his katanas and slashed most of them while trying to protect the girls. Unfortunately, one was able to stab him in his right shoulder, causing him to stumble back to his knees and hold his shoulder. Izuku. Yuraka screamed as she and Asui held him. You're mine kid. A scream from in front of them said. The two teens looked up to see Shigaraki running towards them with his arms stretched. Not knowing what to do or what he was doing, Izuku's body moved on its own in defense as he swung his other sword up, causing the blade to slice right through the wrist of the arm Shigaraki was gonna use on them. 
Just as his hand touched the ground, the decay villain followed suit and held his hand in pain. Ah my hand my hand. He screamed in pain as his hand bled out on the ground. Noticing something poking out his pocket, Yuraka stood up and quickly swiped her weapon back. I warned you didn't I? She said opening up her tess and then getting into a fighting position as more villains surrounded them. Izuku, can you stand? Using his blade to support himself, he stood to both feet. Yeah, I'm okay, he said holding his swords up. He then turned his head to face Asui Asui, you gotta get out of here. Instead, she knelt down in a frog position and readied herself. Call me Tsu. And there's no way I'm leaving my best friend to fight on her own, she said looking at Yuraka. Yuraka at first had a surprised look on her face before it turned to a smile. Izuku too sighed in defeat having a feeling he won't be able to change her mind. Okay. Da. All Might is keeping the main villain busy. Let's take down everyone else fast, he said as all three of the nodded and jumped into action. Regretting what he did with his swords, Izuku switched to his tonfas and chose to fight with his fists. Using his force field arms, he was able to protect himself from Dobby's hell flame attack. Once he was close enough, he was able to punch the stitched up villain in his face into some rubble knocking him out. Mange, who was a little freaked out seeing the vigilante again, was so distracted that she didn't realize the small female sneaking up behind her, holding her hand like a knife. At super speed, she chopped it in the back of her neck, knocking her out. Nighty night, Yuraka said fanning herself with her weapon. Mr. Compress snuck up behind Yuraka trying to use his quirk on her, until he felt something long like a rope wrap around his waist. Turning his head, he saw Asui with her tongue extended tying him up. This is for kidnapping us, she said as she began swinging him around in a circle like a wrecking ball. Once she noticed Magni was about to use her quirk, she quickly swung Mr. Compress towards her, not even giving her a chance to use her quirk and push him back. The two of them got slammed into the ground, just as Asui retracted her tongue. As Izuku held off the other villains, he kept looking at All Might fight off all for one fighting to the death. Though he could hear mostly shouting, he can tell by his movements that he was getting slower. Add, he said mentally while pinning twice on the ground. Not long after, heroes like Gran Torino, Endeavor and Edshot arrived to help. Izuku looked up to see a news chopper recording everything and broadcasting it on TV. He could have sworn he saw the camera pointed at him. Well, so much for keeping a low profile. Help help me please. A voice said gaining Izuku's attention. He looked around until he saw a woman trapped underneath a bunch of rubble. Looking in the direction of all for one, he saw him aim his hands in the direction of the woman, before he shot some kind of powerful air cannon in her direction. Crap he must have seen her. Izuku thought as he tried to rush in the direction of the woman, though he was so far. But what shocked him was when he saw All Might rush in the same direction and take the full force of the attack. Bad Nuuo Izuku screamed as all he could see was a gust of wind. Everything and everyone went silent and still as the cloud began to dissipate. Looking closely, Izuku's eyes widened in shock and fear at the sight before him. All Might, his father, has reverted back to his original state, low on energy and strength. Oh no, he whispered as his eyes moved up to see the camera focusing a lot on All Might. All Might. Yuraka and Asui said looking at him in his weakened state. Take a good look All Might. The world now knows how weak their hero really is, all for one taunted, as All Might fell to one of his knees trying to breathe. And now, they will see, how he dies. Both confused, All Might and Izuku noticed a shadow underneath where he and the woman were. The two looked up to see something inhumanly impossible. A big piece of the building was hovering All Might and the woman. Goodbye, All Might, all for one said as he lowered his hand and the building began to drop. Bad Izuku screamed with all his might as he rushed as fast as he could in their direction. Izuku wait Yuraka screamed as she tried to run too, but Asui stopped her. While running, Izuku placed his hand together and charged his ninpo into her Sengen. Underneath his mask, all for one's mouth formed a smirk of interest. It grew even wider once Izuku reached under the falling building and struck it with his spiraling sphere. I I I Izuku screamed as the sphere in his hand drilled into the building keeping it mid-air. Go get her out of here. Though he was weak and beyond shock by what he was doing, All Might used his strength and pulled the woman out of the rubble. As he carried her out the building's way, Izuku's feet began to dig into the ground as the building itself was about to come down. Just. A little. More. He said as he felt his Rasengan getting smaller. Once he saw All Might and escaped with the woman, Izuku took a sigh of relief as his Rasengan got extremely small and disappeared. Everyone who was watching both on their TVs and with their own eyes, watched a building fall down and broke into pieces at the spot Izuku was standing. They couldn't but be shocked and terrified. No one was more terrified than Yuraka. No. No, please. Yuraka said as she fell to her knees. Asui held her shoulders while staring at the rubble. She looked at her friend to see all tears in her eyes began to leak until they burst into a waterfall. 
is a cute. All for one stared at the rubble, and then at All Might who stood there staring at the rubble with eyes as big as flying saucers, with a woman kneeling beside him. I have to admit All Might, I never imagined that kid of yours had this much strength, he said slowly hovering towards him. Although, that's not one for all is it? All Might only stayed silent as he was too busy feeling sorry for himself. He thought that if he had only paid more attention to him from when he was young, he wouldn't have died like this. Just let me ask you this, is there another with one for all? All for one asked. All Might's teeth clenched upon hearing that his thoughts of his daughter lying in bed at the hospital filled his mind. Unfortunately, All for One caught wind of this. So there is, he said as he raised his hand, and his fingers glowed red, like when he was about to shoot out tendrils. I guess I'll visit them when I'm done with you. Just as he shot the tendrils, something fast, big, and red shot of the rubble, as Zuku was said to be crushed by. Before All for One could even see it clearly, a giant big red fist was met in his face, breaking the mask he was wearing. Uraraka, Asui, All Might, the heroes, and everyone watched in amazement as the one and only Izuku Midoriya launched himself out of the rubble and made a direct blow onto the villain, causing him to move the tendril and miss All Might by an inch. As All for One flew into some rubble from the punch, Izuku tumbled to the ground, allowing his force field replica to take the impact. He rolled to the ground until his back leaned up on some rubble. Uraraka stood up from where she was kneeling and ran towards him with Asui by her side. Izuku. Are you okay? She said checking his face. He manages to barely open his eyes and have a slight smile while holding up a thumbs up. She smiled and threw herself on his chest and began crying in relief. I can't believe it. How did you survive that? Asui asked surprised causing Yuraka to raise her head wanting to listen too. Izuku in response raised one of his tonfas in his left hand. Yuraka saw the weapon and knew what it meant. You made a force field at the last second did you? Yuraka asked. Izuku in response gave off a slight chuckle, to which Uraraka couldn't help but pout angrily that he would make her worry so much. In response, she punched his arm. You idiot. Speaking of his arm, the girls looked at how red and broken it looked. All Might, who was helping the lady walk, walked towards them to see his arm. Izuku, your arm, All Might said looking at his adoptive son both relieved he was alive and surprised by the state of his arm. I'm fine, Izuku said rubbing his arm. I can still move it. Izuku, you need a hospital, Yuraka said with a voice of like an angry wife. Why yes ma'am, Izuku said a little scared. The sound of rubble interrupted them causing everyone to look in its direction. Rising up from it, all for one raised out from it like a ghost with a destroyed mask. Everyone stared at his face not knowing where to look due to the fact that he had no eyes. One punch. It took one punch for you to break my mask, all for one said as his smile grew menacingly. Such a quirk wasted on a child like you. Izuku leaned himself off the rubble and tried to stand up despite everyone persisting him to lie back down. It's not a quirk, Izuku said standing up on both legs and giving a sly smile. It's just a technique that's been passed down to me. You have about the same strength as All Might, yet you say you don't have a quirk, all for one said as he raised his arm in their direction. What exactly are you? Suddenly, what looked like a bunch of shurikens hit his arms, causing them to bleed a bit. What? All for one asked as he looked at both Izuku and Yuraka, knowing full well they possess weapons like those. Unfortunately, the shurikens didn't come from their direction. Hey, faceless. A voice from the distance said loudly. Everyone in the area looked in the direction of where it was coming from and saw something, or someone, unexpectedly. The only one who didn't look surprised was Izuku. Standing on top of a building, was two humans, a rat, and four human-sized turtles standing in front of a blue portal. What is? The one in the blue bandana said pointing his sword in his direction. Is our brother. Izuku. Do you know them? All Might asked staring at them. Yeah, Izuku said smiling. They're my brothers. The news chopper flying in the air pointed his camera and the spotlight in the direction of Splinter and the turtles. On, jumbotrons, phones, tablets, and TVs, the whole of Japan could see the mutant turtles. Now that I think about it, we probably should have worn trench coats, Donnie said looking at the helicopter. I mean, we were supposed to stay hidden. Well, we did rush when we heard what happened so. Ralph said. Yeah, I didn't even get to finish my pizza. Mikey said whining. Eyes focus. We got it. Leo said until he saw the camera and began doing poses. Wait are we live are they getting good sides? Um, master. The one in the mask, Casey Jones said. Right, right, right. Leo said shaking his head. Izuku's in trouble. Let's go. All seven individuals jumped off the roof and landed in front of Izuku and company. Pacey, April, and I will go help Izuku and the other heroes, Splinter said before turning to his sons. Boys, take care of this freak of nature. Ha, ah, you're one to talk rat man, he said as Casey and April ran in the direction of Izuku. 
while April helped the injured walk somewhere safe, Casey restrained the remaining League of Villains for the heroes to take them away. Splinter on the other hand walked up to Izuku and saw his hand. You overuse your Rasengan didn't you? Splinter said looking at Izuku with a stern face. Yeah, sorry, Izuku said chuckling. While Splinter shook his head, he pulled out a scroll from his robe and lay it down. What is that? Asui asked. A healing mantra, Splinter said he knelt in front of Izuku and closed his eyes. Rin, Pio, To, Sha, Kai, Jin, Retsu, Zai, Zen. Splinter said as he made each hand from the scroll and placed both his hands on Izuku's arm. All Might, Yuraka and Asui watch as his hand glowed and the reddish coloring on his hands began to dissipate. Wow, incredible, Asui said. It's just like Recovery Girl's quirk. All Might watched in silence as he stared at the rat man. If you don't mind me asking, what's your relationship to Izuku, he asked very curiously. Izuku stayed quiet not wanting to answer. But he had a feeling Splinter was gonna speak, since he did not know the man there was his father. Well, you could say, I'm his sensei, Splinter said while healing him. My sons and I took of him after he nearly ended his life. All Might gasped as he looked at Izuku, while Yuraka lowered his head already knowing about his backstory. Why would he do that? All Might asked. Apparently, his no good family treated him like a ghost, an imagination, a non-existent being, Splinter said, clenching his teeth. People like that are no doubt the worst. Izuku felt a little anger too, but the thought of how much his sister sacrificed to get him back, made him stay silent longer. He looked at All Might to see him on the verge of tears. For a while, he lived with us, trained with us. Heh. And even cook with us, Splinter said with a smile. My sons couldn't help but see him as a little brother. So they treat him like one. All Might look again at Izuku and see how much stronger he's gotten ever since he left. Izuku, you really have gotten stronger and more mature, he said to himself before turning his head to look at the turtles walking toward his archenemy. Maybe the family that you truly needed was not us, but them. Splinter took his hands off Izuku as the glow disappeared. Everyone looked at his arms to see his hands healed. Though, it still had some scars on it. There's only so much the mantra can Izuku, Splinter said standing up. I'm afraid if you damage your arm any more than that. Splinter held his head down finding it hard to tell him. Yuraka on the other hand wanted to know. What? What would happen to him? She begged. Splinter sighed before continuing. I'm afraid you won't have an arm next time, he said. Yuraka, Asui, and All Might stared in fear while Izuku sighed and nodded his head. I understand, Izuku said. For now, leave him to the boys, Splinter said before turning to look at the battle. He's very powerful. Not even I, the number one hero can hold him off for long, All Might said. Can your sons really take him on? Splinter could only smile. My sons fought many powerful warriors, he said. I believe in them. That rat should look in a mirror after calling me a freak of nature, all for one said before turning to look in front of him to see Mikey, Donnie, Ralph, and Leo standing in front of him sheathing their weapons. And what exactly are you? Well big man, we're ninjas, said Leonardo holding his swords. And we're mutants, Raphael said spinning his say. Technically we're turtles, said Donatello holding his bow staff. And we're teenagers. Michelangelo said spinning his nunchucks. Who loves to eat pizza and kick major ass. Let's just say, we're the shell-tastic team of New York, Leo said. Let's get him, bros. The four ninja turtles rushed towards All for One with ninja speed. The four of them kept using their weapons to advance on All for One, not showing any sign of hesitation. All for One on the other hand kept using his enhanced quirks to defend himself from the blades of their weapons. Once he got some distance, he started beckoning his hand to lure them in. Bring it, he said taunting them before launching air cannons. Spinning his nunchucks as fast as he can and extending them, Mikey was able to block all for one's air cannons. Once close, he used his flexibility and slid under him. How Bunga Mikey screamed as he jumped into the air and used his extensive nunchucks to wrap all for one into a bind wrapping him up. Releasing him from the chains he was in, Mikey used his foot and nose dove into his back. Though for a Donnie, Mikey shouted as he jumped back into the air, grabbed Donnie, and spun him around towards All for One. At the end of Donnie's staff, he formed the shape of a drill and pointed it to All for One. Don't panic, this is only a drill. He said as he fired it directly at All for One. Seeing this coming, All for One enhanced the quirks in his right hand and used them to defend himself. Once he knocked the drill away, Leo used one of his swords and tried to stab him while he was distracted. All for One on the other hand grabbed his blade with his enhanced arm. Seeing an open spot, he held the handle of the sword All for One caught and swung himself to land a kick in his face. As All for One stumbled back, Ralph rushed in and punched him into the abdomen, launching him a few distances back. The four turtles rushed to follow him. Once he recovered, the turtles stood in front of him with smirking faces. 
As blue runes crawled Leo's sword, he looked at Ralph. Oh, big bro, Leo said as both his sword glowed. Right, Ralph said as Leo swung his sword opening a portal which he rushed into. Now Mikey. Restrain him. Leo instructed. Right on. Mikey said rushing towards him again. All for one seeing the little turtle, launched as many red tendrils as he can. Leo seeing this coming kept swinging his swords opening many small portals for Mike to jump through. As a tendril comes close, Mikey jumps through a portal allowing him to get close enough to bind him again. You think these chains will stop me? All for one said struggling to break free. Of course not, Don said as he used his mystic powers and formed blasters. But these will. Mikey not wanting to get hit quickly got out of the way, as Donnie rapidly fired on All for One, as he stood in a place bound by the nunchucks. Once it stopped, All for One stood up with more of his suit destroyed and his mask gravely damaged. Is that all you have? All for One said dusting himself off. Leo only smiled again before pointing into the air. Unknowingly to All for One, Ralph fell through the other end of the portal Leo made earlier, which opened up in the sky right above him. All for One looked up to see what looked like a red meteorite coming out of a blue portal. Hot Soup Ralph shouted as he fell down hard to the ground with his hard spiky shell aimed at All for One. All for One's mouth could only gasp in surprise as he came down on him hard. Everyone watching held on tight as the impact caused a giant shockwave that nearly blew everything away. Ralph jumped back to the group as his force field disappeared. You can stop the music. Whoa, incredible, All Might said. More like amazing, Asui said. You have such powerful brothers Izuku. I do I? Izuku said chuckling. The turtles walked towards the crater Ralph made with his meteor shell. Do you think we beat him? Mikey asked. By my calculations, and the height at which Raphael fell plus the force of impact. Donnie said typing on his wrist while saying calculations. There should be 99% chance that there's absolutely no way he could survive Tha. Donnie was cut off by a large hand extending from the ground and grabbing him by the neck. Donnie Ralph, Leo, and Mikey screamed. All for one then erupted from the ground and slammed Donnie into Mikey deep into the ground. The impact was so hard that it broke Donnie's battle shell, revealing his soft shell side and causing a crack in Mikey's shell. Everyone stared in horror at both the injuries the turtles got and the new and horrifying appearance All for One has gotten. Now, you really made me mad. All for One said. Now, you've forced me to use all the quirks that I have. Ralph looked at how injured his younger brothers are and rushed in full of anger. No, you did not, Ralph screamed as he generated a large hand into a large red fist and tried to hit All for One. In response, All for One's fist collided with his. But instead of a fist standoff, All for One's enhanced hand broke straight through the force field and made direct contact with Ralph launching him straight across the battlefield. Raphael Leo screamed in tears. Though not known them for that long, the heroes and students looked in horror at the big turtle as he lay in a pile of rubble. Tears filled Leo's eyes as he turned to All for One with nothing but anger in his heart. You'll pay for this Leo screamed as he rushed in as fast as he can. Leonardo. Don't. Splinter screamed just as Izuku stood up. Leo jumped into the air and attempted to strike with one of his katanas. All for one simply raised his arm to block like he knew what would happen next. Dry eyed Leo screamed as one of his blades on his enhanced arm, only for it to break into tiny pieces upon impact. As if time was moving in slow motion, Leo's eyes widened in shock as the blade pieces flew away. He didn't even see All for One swing his giant hand before it was too late. He was met with a giant backhand slap that swatted him into a nearby building wall. Izuku stared in the horror at the state his brother was in. Sensei. Casey shouted as he rushed to his side only to find him slightly conscious since he was still able to open. The guy in the news chopper in the air held his mouth in fear. Could this be ladies and gentlemen? Is all hope truly lost? He reported live on TV. Everyone in Japan who was watching the news couldn't help but feel despair, fear, and sadness. Even, Izumi and her mother, who was watching everything from their hospital room, couldn't help but feel scared. It's useless. I've won. All for one screamed with pride. The people who were watching the Jumbotron began to cry and scream in fear. You can throw as many at me if you want. No one, not even your greatest hero, can ever hope to defeat me. I am in Evita. Basengan. A loud voice and powerful voice shouted gaining the attention of every single person paying attention to All for One stop their worries and cries when they saw an unexpected sight. The tied up villains, the heroes, All Might, Yuraka, Asui, April, Casey, and the four slightly conscious ninja turtles, stared with wide eyes with shock to see Izuku Midoriya in the air, launching a spinning rotation of ninpo energy at All for One's face. Not in the arm, not in the stomach, but in the face breaking off his entire mask and revealing more of his hideous face. Wait, when did he? Yuraka said turning back to the spot he was resting to see he was gone. Master. Shigaraki screamed from where he was bound with the other villains. 
Izuku pushed himself off his arm and slid back to the group. Izuku. All Might shouted. You fool. I told you if you do that again. Splinter screamed before getting cut off by Izuku. I know. But a man that everyone admires once said this, Izuku said before turning to All Might. Meddling when you don't need to. Is the essence of being a hero. All Might then remembered he said something like that once. He just couldn't believe that he remembered it. All for one, using his enhanced arm for support, stood up. Bad move, it's too powerful and dangerous, all for one said before looking at his arm to see it getting a little damaged. Still, unless you want to lose that arm of yours, you can defeat me. All for one slowly walked towards the group dragging his enhanced arm on the ground. Izuku held up his arm ready to fight. Sensei wait, a voice said causing Izuku to look to his side. He saw Leo dragging himself towards Izuku with Ralph beside him holding his arm. He looked to his other side to see Mikey supporting Donnie and walking up to him. Izuku, do your Rasengan one more time, Leo said. Izuku gasped and looked at his arm. But, it's not strong enough to. He said before being cut off. Then we'll make it stronger, Ralph said with a thumbs up. Izuku looked at Mikey and Donnie who nodded. Not knowing what they were thinking, Izuku placed his hands together and gathered up his ninpo to form a normal-sized Rasengan. That move won't work on me again, all for one taunted before levitating of the ground. You lose your arm before you even get another chance. Don't underestimate out brother. Ralph said placing his hand under Izuku's Rasengan hand. Izuku is a fighter. Suddenly a small red flame appeared inside the orb, causing it to get bigger. The leader, Leo said putting his hand underneath it too turning the red flame blue and making a red aura circle around it. The party dude, Mikey said following suit and making an orange flame aura circle around it. The genius, Donnie said causing a purple pixelated aura to circle it too. The added ninpo energy caused the Rasengan to grow way bigger than when it did against muscular. Feeling the power coursing through him, Izuku's Hamato eyes began rapidly switching colors. Impossible. J just who are you? All for one shouted with what sounded like fear in his voice. All for one and Gran Torino never thought they'd hear that from him. You really want to know, Izuku said with a strong voice to all for one. My name is Deku. And I'm. A teenage. Shouted Mikey. Mystic. Shouted Donnie. Ninja. Shouted Ralph. Turtle. Shouted Leo, as the Rasengan grew to its largest form. Everyone in the area watched as Izuku closed his eyes, and his body began to glow green. Even the turtles backed away upon seeing what was happening to him. From his foot up to his head, his costume began changing. To new shoes, a ninja suit with a turtle symbol on it, black gloves, and a black bandana mask. As the cloth of the headband sprung out, Izuku opened his eyes revealing his bright shining green Hamato eyes. Standing there was a new hero, with the powers of a ninja, in the palm of his hand. Everyone in the country marveled at the sight before them. Izuku, or should I say Deku, stared straight at all for one. Most of my life I suffered both pain and loneliness, he said closing his eyes and allowing small tears to slip out. I thought was worth nothing. He then turned to Yuraka and Asui. But then I met friends. And then to Splinter, the turtles and even All Might. And family who cared. He then looked back to all for one with a smirk. All for one, get ready to be shell-shocked, he said with a buttload of confidence. PCH, go ahead and try. I'll destroy you right here and now. All for one said prepping to attack. Instead, the turtles, minding their injuries stood in front of Izuku. They all probably know this, but we only got one chance, he said holding his one sword and the others holding their weapons. Let's go. Right. Izuku said twisting his hand making the Rasengan disappear. Yuraka, Asutsu, I need your help. The girls nodded readily for anything. All for one used his other hand and shot his red tendrils at the turtles, despite having one sword, Leo knocked away all of them. He then jumped and dived in with the tip of the blade pointing at him. This again, all for one thought as he lifted his enhanced arm to break it. Unfortunately for him, Leo hoped he does that because he swiped the sword while flying toward him, disappeared through a portal, and reappeared through a portal that formed behind him. Such annoying tricks, all for one said as he turned around and tried to backslap him again, except that Mikey wrapped his chains around his arm, preventing him from moving it. Leo swung his sword and sliced the chest part of his suit, causing a bit of blood to leak out. All for one stumbled back and held his chest, not realizing something big was about to erupt from the ground in front of him. Ralph with one force-filed hand broke through the ground and uppercut all for one in the face, and at the same time, Donnie appeared from behind the villain, formed a taser at the end of his staff, and used it to shock him from behind his neck. You impudent creatures. All for one screamed as he slammed his enhanced hand on the ground breaking it apart, causing the turtles to lose balance. He then shot a powerful air cannon that sent them launching backward. Due to Donnie still in his soft shell, Ralph held him and protect him from the collision of rubble. 
As Leo and Mikey landed, Leo spoke as loud as he can. The rest is up to you now. He said looking at his human brother who was being applied with zero gravity by his girlfriend and wrapped in a tongue wrap by her friend. Izuku. Asui then spun Izuku around like a wrecking ball and threw him like a rocket towards All for One with his twin Sai in hand. Using his fist, he punched All for One in the area Leo slashed with his sword. All for One then grabbed Izuku by the collar with his normal hand and held him up. They put up a good fight, All for One said clenching his enhanced arm into a fist. What difference can you make? Don't go underestimating me, Izuku said before disappearing like a red hologram. Suddenly two more Izukus appeared around him trying to attack him from both sides, but All for One destroyed them, both with both his arm and red tendrils. Suddenly one more came running with a sigh in his hands. You're the real one. All for One said trying to punch him with his enhanced arm. Izuku however, slid underneath it and jumped up trying to stab him. All for One added some quirks in his legs and attempted to kick him only to reveal that he was another hologram. Although, the hologram let go of his sigh last minute before disappearing causing it to stab into his stomach. Ah. All for one said yanking the sigh out of his stomach. As he looked at his, it disappeared too. Hey. A loud voice said causing him to look up. I'm up here. Izuku then raised his right hand up, and the massive Rasengan the turtles helped him form, reappeared in his hands, with all the embers of each brother swirling inside. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, Uraka, and Asui use the remaining power they have left to scream two words to Izuku. Though Deku, Yukasha Izuku screamed as he threw his Rasengan towards All for One. All for One on the other hand forced every single quirk he had in his body and punched the massive Rasengan countering it. Eh, I knew this wouldn't be enough. You cannot beat me so easily with the same attack, he mocked. I'm not done Izuku screamed pushing the Rasengan even more. Both the villain and the vigilante struggled to push the other back. The power of both was so great and powerful that it caused a massive force to be released from them. Everyone in the facility, especially the turtles and the girls, hung on as tight as they can trying not to get blown away by the force. This is nothing you lit brat, I'm the greatest villain in the world. He said pushing his arm deeper. Izuku's arm, on the other hand, the gloves that he got ripped apart and the sleeve of his new suit disintegrated. As he felt the drawback of the power, he gritted his teeth in anger and pain. And I'm, a hero and a half she yell Izuku screamed as he pushed the Rasengan as hard as he can. To not only All Might and Gran Torino's surprise, but All for One was shocked beyond relief to see his enhanced arm begin to disintegrate from the rotation of energy until the full force of the sphere hit him directly. To think, my life was ended by the son of All Might, All for One mentally said as the green orb absorbed him whole. Turtle power Izuku shouted as he glowed with everlasting green energy. Suddenly a huge green explosion erupted from the spot, causing an immense shockwave to emerge knocking back anyone who was standing or even kneeling. The Rasengan flew into the air before exploding into green particles. It was dark. He could not see anything. Even though he knows his eyes are open, he could not see a thing. But he could hear something. Where is he? He was sure was the sound of his girlfriend. He's around here. Keep looking the voice of the cool blue leader of the turtles. He tried to move, but he just couldn't. He could hardly even feel his arms, mostly his right arm. Guys, I see something, he heard Mikey's voice say. The sound of multiple footsteps began to increase until it stopped right close to him. It's his mask. Scanning for life signals. The sound of Donnie said. Guys, it's below us, and it's pulsing. Dotted, the strong voice of Ralph. The sound of digging began to fill Izuku's ears. Not more than a few seconds later, a bright light was shown causing him to close it due to the brightness. Once he was able to open his eyes, he was met with multiple eyes. Opening his eyes as wide as he can, Izuku was finally able to get his vision back when he saw the crying faces of his four mutant brothers, his girlfriend, her best friend, his master, and his father. H hey, he said with a sore throat. Where's all for one? Gone. You did it Izuku, All Might said in his skinny form while crying. You defeated the world's most dangerous villain and my arch enemy. Izuku, you really have proven to be the greatest ninja to have ever lived, Splinter said, letting his eyes leak with tears. The ancestors would be proud. You truly are amazing, Deku. Eyes, we gotta pull him out. Uraraka shouted wanting to hug him. On it, Ralph said using his enhanced arms to claw through the rubble trying to dig him out. Once enough rubble was cleared, the eight of them gasped in shock at the side in front of them. W what? Izuku said turning his head to his right to see what they were staring at. He then gasped understanding what they were looking at. Oh. We need bandages, Asui said in a panic. No need, Donnie said ripping off his bandana and tying it. The other turtles, understanding what he was doing, ripped off their masks and gave them to Donnie and began typing them together. There, all done. Using his left hand, Izuku tried to push himself off the ground to stand up. 
H hey, what are you doing dude? Mikey said holding him. You shouldn't be getting up. He's right Izuku. You should rest, All Might said trying to lay him back down. Instead, Izuku shook them off and stood up to his feet. Not. Yet. There's something. I need to do, he said sorely. Slowly, he began towards the largest lump of rubble and walked up it. Everyone just stood where they found him and watched him climb up it. Every time he nearly trips, they were ready to jump and help him, but they had a feeling they shouldn't. Finally, Izuku reached the top. The news chopper in the air pointed its camera at Izuku, as his hair covered his eyes. Slowly, he raised his left hand up in the air. Once he was able to stretch high enough, he clenched his hand. The guy in the news chopper began to cry leaking tear of joy and happiness. The he did the half-shell hero has defeated the villain. He screamed as Izuku stood there with a battered costume, his hair covering his eyes and a mixture of different colored bandanas and mask wrapped neatly where his right arm was supposed to be. Slowly, Izuku leaned back and forth before falling face front. Buffing up into his muscle form, All Might rushed in hyper speed and caught him by the back. Izuku opened his eyes so he could see him. You of all people deserve to do that, All Might said smiling. Izuku simply smiled before All Might helped him stand again. The other heroes who got injured helped the remaining citizens and were able to locate a nearby hero who also got kidnapped. April and Casey on the other hand brought the villains to police custody. The League of Villains was finally finished, as Shigaraki stomped his feet and whined like a baby. No. He's not dead. He can't be dead. Deku, Carapace. Whatever your name is, I'll kill you and your girlfriend. You hear me. I will kill you. He screamed before being shoved into a police truck. Izuku was walked by everyone into the district where a bunch of people was waiting for him. He looked around to see people cheering for him and crying while thanking him. As he walked, he couldn't help but smile and feel proud. Once Yuraka stood in front of him, he chuckled a little. Bess, I overdid it huh? Izuku said scratching his neck with his left hand due to it being the only hand he has. Idiot, just shut up, she said before grabbing his face and pulling him into a kiss, even though she knew they were in public and on live TV. They stood there for a few seconds before separating. Now everyone knows the greatest hero ever already has a girlfriend, Yuraka giggled causing Izuku to laugh despite the pain. He then turned to his brothers to see people taking pictures and asking questions about them. Just say you have turtle quirks and trained in karate. Izuku shouted to them while snickering. Endeavor, then walked up to him gaining the attention of everyone. You know I can't say I'm not truly grateful too for defeating all for one, but are you sure you still want to do this? He said while holding handcuffs. Izuku nodded while smiling. Yes, this is my last job as a vigilante, he said holding up his left hand. Endeavor nodded before slapping the cuffs on him. But first, I need a hospital. Endeavor nodded in agreement before taking him away. As the crowd protested, the turtles, Splinter, All Might and the girls were gonna chazed after him until they saw Izuku turn and raise two fingers while smiling. Understanding what it mean, the turtles nodded while showing off their sign as Izuku went inside an ambulance with Endeavor and drove off with police cars behind it. Slowly, Izuku began to open his eyes. He didn't know why, but he felt so relaxed and comfortable feeling cold airbrush against his skin, while his body was lying down on something extremely soft. WH where, am I? He whispered to himself while opening his eyes wide enough he was able to get a good look around the room he was in, seeing the white walls, IV tubes, and heart monitors. That's when he started to remember the massive fight between him and all for one. Right, of course, I'm in the hospital. You know, it's funny how you still snore in your sleep, a voice said causing him to turn his head to his side. Sitting up in a hospital bed beside was a girl with green hair, striking a similar resemblance to him wearing a hospital gown. Izumi. Izuku said. Good morning, big brother, she said smiling at him. Izuku was at first glad she was safe until he remembered something. Wait, Izumi, your right arm, he said trying to sit up only to fall back down in pain. Don't push yourself Izuku. You've been out for five days, Izumi said before lifting up her casted arm. Seeing, I'm healing. Thank God, Izuku said signing in relief before realizing what she just said. Wait three days. Although. She said causing Izuku to look at her with worry. Izuku, you should probably look at your arm. Izuku was confused by this because he was sure his whole right arm was disintegrated when he defeated all for one. What's more confusing was when he felt himself move his arm like it was there. Actually, it really felt like he still had it. Turning to his right side, he could see a lump under the sheets of his side. Using his left hand he yanked the sheets off to see something totally unexpected. Using his left hand to sit up, he slowly lifted up what seems to be a black mechanical robot arm with glowing green lights. WH what in the? Izuku said as he kept moving it clenching and opening it. Careful, Donnie said that he's still making modifications, Izumi said, trying to calm him down. 
Oh, sure I'll. He said before realizing what she just said. Wait, Donnie. Izumi smiled sadly while lowering her head. I met your um. Brothers on the night you were brought in. They said you fell unconscious on the ride to the hospital, she said turning away and giving a little chuckle. They even gave me the cold shoulder when they heard I was your sister. Yeah, sorry about that, Izuku said smiling. Nah, I deserved it, Izumi said. After all, who wouldn't get angry at the sight of someone who caused their brother so much pain? The two stayed silent, allowing the room to only be filled by the sound of the heart monitors beeping. Izuku, I just want to say that I... She said before being cut off. You and Kachin caused me a lot of pain in the past, he said. It was so much that I had no choice and nearly committed suicide. Izumi gasped upon hearing that as tears built up in her eyes. She was always against hurting her older brother, but she had no idea it would lead him to end his life. I just... She said before being cut off again. Although, if you and Kachin didn't abuse me and drove me to that state, I wouldn't have met the Turtle Brothers, he said. So I can't fully blame you. The sound of sniffles began to fill the room. Izuku turned his head to see Izumi on the verge of breaking into a waterfall of tears. You should have taken it, she said in a sobbing voice. You should have taken Ofa. Izuku's eyes widened in shock at what she just said as he turned to face her. One for all is a power that's supposed to be given to a hero, not an abuser, he said, using his free hand to wipe her tears. I don't deserve to be a hero, not after all the things I have done to you. Izuku stayed silent as she kept telling him she was sorry. As she buried her face in her hand, Izuku took a sigh before speaking again. You remember Koda? Izuku asked quietly. Izumi raised her head to look at him. You remember how much of a pain he was when we met him? Yeah, what's your point? She said not getting it. Despite how he felt about us and heroes, you stood up to protect him from a very dangerous villain, he said, causing her to widen her eyes in surprise. Plus, my Rasengan wouldn't have gotten strong enough to beat him if it wasn't for you. Saving a child's life made us both heroes. Izumi sniffled as a small smile began to crawl on her face. All the sorrow she felt in the past slowly began to fade away. Wiping away the last of her tears, she turned to face Izuku. I love you, big brother, she said finally able to say it after so long. Looking at the smile on her face, Izuku couldn't help but smile too. I really missed you. Me too Izumi. I love you too, he said as he moved his legs off the bed and held out his left arm and his robotic arm as much as possible. Izumi, having a feeling of what it meant, got out of her bed and walked toward him. She then leaned in and rested her chin on his shoulder, while wrapping her left arm around his neck. Izuku reciprocated by wrapping his arm around her waist, leaving his robotic arm on the bed. Once they separated, Izuku began to chuckle for some reason. What's so funny? Izumi asked with a raised eyebrow. When you think about it, we can call ourselves, the handy twins, he said wiggling his robotic fingers. Izumi couldn't help but burst into laughter at his joke. It's been years since the two got to laugh together and make jokes. Those to show why we're related, she said wiping the tear from her laughter. I think my life really is in danger, Izuku said joking again causing Izumi to laugh even harder. Both of their laughter was then interrupted by the sound of a sneeze. The two stopped laughing and looked outside the window to see four green beings hanging upside, watching them like hawks. Oh uh. Leo said wiping his nose with a finger. Jisundit. Izuku simply sighed before looking at them with a slightly annoyed face. Eyes, get in here already, Izuku said with a deadpan face. Leo then unsheathed one of his swords and opened a portal through which the four fell through. Another blue portal opened in the hospital room the twins were in, and came flying out of it was four human-sized turtles. Real smooth Leo, Ralph said groaning on the ground. Real smooth. Ha, ha, sorry, he said scratching his head. As they stood up, Izuku simply shook his head while laughing. I think it's time we formally introduce ourselves, Izuku said aiming his hand towards Izumi. Guys, meet Izumi Midoriya, my younger sister. Surprising the turtles, Izumi bowed in respect. Izumi, these are brothers. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo, Izuku said showing his hands to the turtles. The turtles crossed their arms while showing a look of distrust toward the girl. Izumi noticing the looks took a deep breath before walking up towards them. I understand that you don't take a liking to me. But first off, I would like to personally say, thank you for taking care and protecting my brother, Izumi said bowing her head. The brothers looked at each other and then back at the girl. After hearing that um. Heartfelt apology earlier, I think we can let you off the hook, Mikey said. Plus, I've always wanted a sister. If Izuku forgives you, then I guess I will too, Leo said smiling with his arms crossed. Same here, Ralph said with a thumbs up. The three turned their heads to Donnie who had his head facing the other way. Donnie opened one of his eyes to see them staring at him. 
For the record, I only came to do the last adjustments to Izuku's arm, he said, taking out tools from his shell and walking up to Izuku. Before he could start, he looked at Izumi for a brief moment. Meh, I honestly don't care, he said flipping on his goggles and looking closely at Izuku's arm while making a few adjustments. Izumi smiled in relief and looked back at the turtles to ask a question. You're not actually humans right? She said causing the turtles and even Izuku to tense up. Are you really mutants? The five in the room looked left and right at each other before nodding. That's very cool Izuku, Izumi said. I mean four actual mutant ninja turtles. That's even more bizarre than a normal human getting a mutant quirk. Yup, full turtle. All shell and all, Leo said pointing his thumb towards himself. Suddenly, the six individuals in the room were interrupted by the door opening revealing a teenage girl with brunette hair. Izuku Yuraka screamed as she ran straight to the boy's bed and hugged his waist tightly. Whoa, careful. I'm still making some adjustments to the arm, Donnie said twiddling with some screwdrivers. Oh sorry, Yuraka said backing up. How are you feeling Aizu? Well, besides sitting in a hospital with a robot arm being fixed up by a mutant turtle. Izuku said sarcastically. I'm doing great. Everyone in the room began laughing at his joke until it was interrupted by the Izuku yelling in pain. Whoops, sorry about that Izuku, Donnie said tightening a screw on the mechanical arm. He then stood up and wiped off the sweat on his forehead. Okay, try and move it now. Everyone in the room stared as Izuku slowly tried to lift his hand up. To everyone's amazement, it moved, bent, and twitched like a regular arm. Izuku even made some punches to test its speed. It feels so real. It's like I never even lost my hand, Izuku said as he stared at the arm in amazement. This is incredible Donnie. That's not the best part, Donnie said with a smirk on his face. Try using our tech jutsu. Doing what he said, Izuku focused his ninpo energy, and his eyes flashed purple. At the same time, the green lights on his mechanical arm turned purple. Upon surprise, the arm began to shape shift itself and formed into some kind of blaster. What in the name of all might? Izumi shouted in surprise. Even Izuku was surprised by the sudden transformation of his arm. Consider it a reward for doing an amazing job, he said before murmuring something else. And I find it unfair how my powers only gave you a staff. Hearing that, Izuku couldn't help but laugh as his arm reverted back to its original form. Suddenly, the sound of the door opening interrupted our conversation. Izuku was at first scared since his turtle bros were still in the room, but he sighed in relief when it opened, revealing a surprising pair of individuals. Principal Nezu? Yuraka asked surprised to see the principal of UA standing at the door. Dad? All the turtles said once they saw Splinter. Why does seeing two rat-like beings together isn't really all that surprising? Izumi thought in her head. And did they just say, Dad? What going on? Were you both here? Izuku said as they both walked up to his bed. Of course, I wanted to see how my student is doing. Splinter said. And I wanted to meet you Carapace, he said. Or is it Deku now? Izuku looked at Izumi and Yuraka who just smiled at him. It's just Deku sir, he responded. But why do you want to see me? Deku, the news of your heroic acts has been spread throughout the country, Nezu said. Everyone is calling you a hero. Really? He said surprised by the news. Yes, and that is why. He said stopping himself. The government wants to issue you Deku, the teenage mystic ninja turtle, and your brothers, the teenage mutant ninja turtles, full-time hero licenses. The whole room went silent before Izuku spoke. What? Izuku screamed. What? Izumi screamed in shock. What? Yuraka screamed in excitement. What? The turtles screamed in shock and excitement. What? Splinter screamed too causing everyone to look at him confused. I told you about this yesterday Yashi, Nezu said. Oh, right you did, he said laughing a bit. Sorry. Wait, 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 Izuku said, flaring both his hands. Me, a 15-year-old, a full-time hero. But I'm a vigilante. What did expect? They lock you up after revealing yourself to the public and saving countless lives. Nezu asked. Well, yeah. Izuku said causing both Izumi and Yuraka to slap their hands on their faces. I mean what I've been doing for the past months has been illegal. None of that matters young man, he said taking up a remote and pointing it to the TV turning it on. See for yourself. We're here with the chief of police, Kenji Tsuragami, to talk about the recent word about making the green vigilante a full-time hero, the reporter said, standing beside a man-dog with a bunch of people standing behind him, holding up signs saying. Turtle power, Buyakasha Deku's our hero marry me, hero. That last one made Yuraka's eye twitch a bit. So sir, what are your thoughts? A few months ago, he was no more than a kid who was breaking the law. Sure his acts were noble, but he still didn't follow protocols, the chief said, causing Izuku to lower his head in shame. 
but then a few days ago, despite revealing his secret identity and losing his arm, he stood up and fraud against the villain that even All Might, our greatest hero, had a hard time defeating. So is that why you chose to appoint him to a full-time hero? The reporter asked. The public and other heroes have made their choice, and so have I, the chief said. I hope that he will at least live up to his name. After hearing that, Izuku stared in the background at everyone cheering for him. He could even see little kids putting on makeshift masks from bandanas and rags and posing as him with tree sticks and toy swords. Tears built up in his eyes, one by one, they began trailing down his cheek. He quickly rubbed them away with his non-robotic arm and smiled before turning to Nezu. I would be honored, sir, he said causing the turtles to cheer in excitement. All right, dude. Ralph said. My invention shall be shown to the world. Donnie said evilly. Aobunga, Mikey said. Oh yeah. Turtle power baby. Leo said. I'm proud of you Izuku. Yuraka said crawling up his bed and his smooch on his lips, leaving behind a lipstick mark. Your dream's finally coming true big brother. Izumi said. Hearing that, an idea flew into Izuku's head. Hey guys, can I talk with Principal Nezu, Izuku asked before turning to Izumi. Alone. Not knowing what he was thinking, everyone nodded their heads and exited the room leaving him alone with a small white mouse looking person. Sir, as a full-time hero, I will have a lot of responsibilities, he started off with. But, can I ask for one favor, if it's not too much to ask? Of course. What do you need? He asked before hearing Izuku's request. After their little meeting, Nezu exited the room and left, while everyone entered the room again. What were you guys talking about? Yuraka asked sitting beside her boyfriend while Izumi sat beside her brother. Oh, not much, he said with a smirk. Though she wanted to pester him more on what it is, she decided not to. For the next hour, everyone hung out in Izuku's and Izumi's rooms until visiting times were over. The turtles and Splinter gave Izuku a big hug before teleporting back to New York. And after a bit of kissing, Yuraka left leaving the twins by themselves. Mom and Dad didn't come, Izuku said laying on his bed. They said they had something important to take care of, Izumi said laying in her bed. But they really wanted to come. They've been worried about you. Izuku turned in his bed and faced away from her. Actions speak louder than words. If they really care, I'll believe it when I see it, he said before going to sleep. All Izumi could do was sigh and lay down in her bed. After spending a few days at the hospital, Izumi was finally discharged without her cast. The only visitors Izuku had gotten were his girlfriend, his sister obviously, the turtles who'd sneak in pizza, because hospital food suck and some student of 1A. Then one day, Yuraka came to visit him again only to find his hospital room empty. When she asked where he went, the receptionist said that he was escorted by a limousine and that's it. She tried to text and call him, but his T-phone always go to voicemail. She came to the conclusion that he was busy with some pro-hero work. Just thinking about Kinda made her sad that she won't be able to see him that much. But knowing the kind of person he is, he wouldn't want her to mope. He would want her to continue on her hero journey. That's when she heard that Yue was turning into a boarding school. Currently, she was standing outside the newly built building with her bags. This place sure is huge, she said looking up at the building in her uniform. Yeah, it sure is, Izumi said walking up beside her in her uniform too. Oh hey Izumi, Yuraka said. Ever since Izuku was in the hospital, the two were getting to know each other a bit more. You could say they even felt like sisters hey, have you heard anything from your brother? Nope. He's been like a ghost for the past few days, she responded holding her backpack. Maybe he's been wrapped up in some hero meetings. Yeah, I guess you're right, Yuraka said in a sad voice. Hey, I'm sure you'll see him again, Izumi said placing a hand on her shoulder. I mean, he has to take a break sometimes. Yeah, you're right, Yuraka said finally smiling. Afterward, Mr. Izawa gave them the rundown of how they will be living and their curfew hours. After that, he told everyone to take the rest of the day off to get used to the building. Once they were inside they observed the interior of the dorm. Not bad, Kirishima said looking around. I still can't believe we're living in something this big, Hagakur said twirling around. What do you think you're Raka? Oh yeah, it's nice, she said trying to keep up a smile. Unfortunately, no one believes her base on her tone. Drop the act, round face, Bakugo said. You were thinking about him again. SH shut up. You're thinking about him too, Yuraka said lowering her head and turning away. He did risk your life to save your sorry ass. Yuraka, please refrain from using such languages. He ate a lectured while chopping his hands. Shut four eyes. Bakugo said before turning his head and walking towards the staircase before murmuring something. She's not wrong. As he went up the stairs, everyone stayed silent for a while. Hey, why don't we settle down, and then after, I'll prepare something for us to eat, Sato insisted. Everyone then agreed and either took the elevator or up the stairs to their respective rooms. 
As Sato opened his door and closed it, he was met with a surprise visitor. Need help preparing dinner, the person said with a grin. Later. Iraka was putting down placing the last of her clothes in her drawer and closing it. Looking back in her bag for anything else, she found a picture portrait. Once she saw it, a warm smile grew on her face as she placed it on her dresser. Just because you're a pro hero, don't you dare think you can ignore your girlfriend, she said talking to the picture. Next time I see you, I'll be sure to give you a knock on the head. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupted her little talk. She walked to the door and opened it to see her next door neighbor, Izumi standing there in short shorts and a shirt. Hey you're Araka, she said looking around her room. Your room looks very nice. Ah really? It's not much, she said scratching the back of her head. Nah, it's so you, she said walking in. As she walked around, she saw the picture of her and Izuku on her dresser. When did you take this? Oh, it was sometime after my internship with Gunhead, Yuraka said looking at it as they both sat on her bed. Izuku got a raise for doing well at work, so he decided to take me to the amusement park on one of his day offs. That's my brother for ya, Izumi said while handing the frame back to Yuraka. I'll tell you what, tomorrow you and I can go out and find out where the heck my brother. Yuraka stared at her weirdly as she froze in place. Uh, Izumi. You okay? Yuraka asked snapping her finger in front of her. Do you smell that? Izumi said sniffing the air. Not understanding what she meant, she sniffed the air and froze in place too. The smell. It can't be, she said with wide eyes. It can't be him. The two of them looked at each other before jumping off the bed and running outside the door, only to run into Ishido, due to the fact they were on the same floor. A Ishido Yuraka said running into her. You smell that too, Ashido asked with drool leaking from her mouth, earning a silent nod from both Greenette and Brunette. All three of them took the elevator and headed downstairs while meeting other people on the way. Once everyone was downstairs they were welcomed by a huge sign saying, Welcome to the 1A dorms. What the hell? Bakugo said only to be cut off by the sound of a cart being pushed. Everyone turned their heads to see Sato wearing casual clothes pushing a cart full of delicious food. Ho! Oh. Ashido started off. Lie! Said Mineta. Delupa Kaminari said. Sato. This looks amazing, Yayoi Rozu said. How do you make so much? More importantly, how do you get the pizza to smell just like how he makes it, Yuraka asked. Sato only laughed before pointing his thumb to his back. Ask a real chef himself, he said causing everyone to look behind him. Behind the counter stood a figure with green hair, wearing a chef's hat wearing a shirt that says flannel shirt in Japanese while holding a big sword in his left hand. The figure turned around, allowing everyone to see his face causing everyone but mostly Asui, Izumi, and Yuraka's eyes to open wide with immense shock. Oh hey, guys, Izuku Midoriya, wearing a black shirt and small shorts, said showing off a bright smile. Can you hold on for a bit? Using his right arm, he took up a bunch of fruits and tossed them up in the air. At super speed, he jumped up in the air and sliced them all up into cubes. Everyone couldn't help but watch in amazement. As he fell to the ground, he used the flat end of his sword and caught all the pieces. Grabbing a huge bowl, he slid them all into it and made a fruit salad. There, dinner is served, he said with a grin. Although when he didn't hear anything, he looked around to see everyone still staring at him with shock. What? He asked before receiving a heavy kick in the face from both his girlfriend and his little sister. The kick was so hard, it sent him flying a few feet away from where he's standing. Hey, what was that for? He said rubbing his face. He was then met with murderous faces from both girls. Don't you want us mister, Yuraka said cracking her knuckles. Where have you been big brother? Izumi said in a menacing voice. WW wait. I can explain, he quickly said before using his adachi to create a miniature sized portal and reaching inside it. He then pulled out something wrapped in plastic before the portal closed. As he held out the plastic covered item, the girls looked closely at it. Both of their eyes opened wide in shock from seeing it. Not just them, but all of 1A couldn't believe what he was holding. In his hand, wrapped in plastic was a UA uniform containing a grey jacket, white shirt, tie, and pants. WHY do you have a UA uniform Izuku? Yuraka said trying not to believe what she was seeing and thinking. Well, isn't it a school rule that all students must wear a uniform to class? I jokingly asked causing everyone to gasp. You mean? Izumi asked before being cut off by Izuku. Yup, you're looking at the newest addition to the 1A class, he said while laughing nervously. Suddenly, Izumi and Yuraka launched themselves at him and wrapped him in a hug. Most of the students then began cheering in excitement as well. But Izuku, you're a pro hero now, Yuraka asked. She's right big brother. You don't need to be in hero school, Izumi said confused. Do you guys remember back in the hospital, and I told you I wanted to speak to Nezu alone? Izuku asked receiving a nod from both of them. Well. Flashback. Of course. What do you need? 
Nezu asked before hearing Izuku's request. Would it be okay if I attend your school as a student? Izuku asked while bowing his head. Nezu took the news by surprise, although he had a feeling something like this was coming. Before I give an answer, may I ask why, he said sipping a cup of tea, which he pulled from who knows where. Though I have been appointed a pro hero, it was not in the way I expected it to be. From when I was just a kid, I've always dreamt of going to UA to train to become a great hero, Izuku said before looking at his robotic hand and converting it to tech blaster mode. These powers that I have, there's still so much I want to figure out. That is if you'll accept me. Nezu smiled and placed the cup he was drinking from on the bed table, seriously where'd he get it from? Actually, it would honor me to have a hero like you attend my school, he said as he and Izuku exchanged handshakes. So, which class do you wish to be a part of? We're planning on turning the school into a boarding school after all. Izuku smiled as a set of people appeared in his mind whole loves his food. Ha, ha. I choose. Present. Class 1A. Everyone asked at the same time. You guys are my friends right? Izuku said still on the ground with his favorite girls still holding him. Do you not want me to be a part of your class? Hell yeah. Of course man. Welcome to our class. I've got no problem. You and I need a dance rematch. Teach me your shredding skills. Teach me to be cool for chicks. We need your food. Most of the class said not wanting him to leave. Izuku couldn't help but laugh a bit. Oh good, cause I already set up my room, Izuku said causing mostly every to go silent. Iruma Shido asked with sparkling eyes. I call a room competition. Hey, maybe after we eat. Izuku asked nervously as he stood up off the ground. Suddenly, everyone sat down on chairs and pulled some forks and knives out of nowhere to answer his question. Best that works out, he said chuckling a bit. As if it was Thanksgiving, everyone began filling their plates with different foods and began scarfing down. As they ate, Izuku got to know his new classmates a bit more than when they visited him at the pizza shop. After they finished, they began their little room competition. And of course, they started off with a guest of honor. WW we're neighbors. Mineta said shaking in fear. I made a special request so I can keep a personal eye on you the most, Izuku said in a threatening voice. After all the reports I've heard about you, it's best to keep you on a leash. And but leash, I mean my chains. As Mineta gulped in fear, the girls whispered thank you to him. Izuku turned the knob, opened the door, and revealed his room. Everyone entered and marveled at the sight though the layout was the same as the other rooms. The walls were covered with red brick-like wallpaper, the bed sheets were black, there was a multi-screen computer, and some picture portraits of him and his turtle bros and some with him and Yuraka. And over the bed hung a New York City manhole cover. I hope that's sanitary. Ida asked himself looking at it. Looking around more, they noticed some makeshift furniture out of some pizza boxes and iron poles. Dude, you made these. Kaminari asked sitting on the chair pizza chair. It's actually quite comfy. Yeah, I brought some of these things back from my old lair, Izuku said. What caught everyone's attention was a stand that contained weapons that looks exactly like the main weapons Izuku uses. Are these real please tell me they're real Kaminari said leaping off the chair and standing in front of the stand. Oh, they're real. My master gave them to me as a gift when I told him I was moving in, Izuku said watching Kaminari take up one of the nunchucks and spun it around a bit. If you all want, I don't mind teaching you some techniques. Really? Everyone asked in excitement. Just then, Yarazu rushed up to his face with sparkles in her eyes, causing him to stumble back. Would you please I'd like to know some bunjutsu if you don't mind, she asked with a desperate face. Shifting his eyes to the side he could see both Yuraka and Izumi glaring at him with red demon eyes, so he quickly gave his answer. Yeah, of course, I will. I'll teach all of you. He said at super speed causing Yarazu to back away and jump in excitement, while the others lowered their fists. Oh yeah, Kaabangaiya Kaminari said in excitement while spinning the nunchucks faster, only for them to hit in a certain place causing him to squeak like a mouse. Ah, my egg rolls, he said before falling to the ground. As everyone stared at him, they looked at each other before laughing. After that, they continued their competition and went into the other rooms. Once they were done, they made their vote and made the winner obviously Sato due to the girl's love of cake. After which, one by one, they started to head to their beds to get ready for class the next day. I really wish we could sleep together again, Yuraka said in a whining pout state. Same, but as long as we're here, we have to follow the school rules, Izuku said pushing back some of her hair. But doesn't stop us from visiting each other in the daytime. Yuraka giggled and went on her tippy toes to give him a peck. I look forward to it, she said before walking to the elevator and pressing the button. Nighty, nighty, Izu, she said blowing a kiss just as the door closed. Izuku's face grew a blush while scratching the back of his neck. Lucky bastard, Mineta whimpered before slamming his room door. 
do not mind him. Have a good night Midoriya, Aoyama said closing his door. Izuku simply rolled his eyes and went to open his door until he felt something vibrating in his pocket. He pulled out his T-phone to see a message from Izumi. Meet me on the roof, it said. Though he didn't understand what that meant, he took the emergency stairs and walked up until he reached the top of the roof. Standing there were three figures in the night. With the moon shining one of them was Izumi of course, the other two though were. Mom, Dad, Izuku said in a low voice before closing the door behind him. Izuku, Inko said walking up to him. She then raised her hand to touch his cheek, but was a bit hesitant, thinking he would move away from her. But when he didn't, she continued and touched his cheek. Upon touch, the tears she was holding in began trailing down. My son. I haven't heard you say that in years, he responded in a cold voice. Why am I hearing that just now? Inko in response took her hand off his cheek and kneeled down in front of him. Izuku. She started off in a low voice. Your father and I are retiring as pros. Izuku's eyes widened not only in shock but surprise. The number one hero and his wife are actually shocked. Why? Izuku asked still surprised. All Might then walked up beside her in his skinny form and a cast on his arm. It's because of what we were that it made us blind to what was in front of us, he said going to his knees too. Suddenly, they did the most unexpected thing that any parent would do. They bowed as if they were begging. Izuku not as heroes, but as your parents. All Might said before being cut off by Inko. We beg for your forgiveness, Inko said as she began crying. Izuku couldn't help but stumble back by this action. Izumi walked up beside him and placed a hand on his shoulder and gave him a warm smile. Izuku looked back at his parents and gave a smile. Please raise your heads, he said in a normal plain voice. The two looked up so they can look into his eyes. I don't accept your forgiveness. Hearing that made them lower their heads in shame, especially when he walked past them not saying a word, once he stopped he spoke again. But you can spend your retirement making up for all the years you have ignored me, he said, making them perk up and turn their heads. He turned around and gave a little smile. Maybe then, I'll forgive you. The two adults stood up and walked up to him with Izumi by their side. Opening their arms, they took Izuku into a huge family hug. The hug that he's been waiting for years. As they stood there for a full minute, an alarm was made causing them to separate. Izuku took out his T-phone again to see if it was a police scanner. 2802, 2802, burglary and process downtown. Suspects considered with dangerous quirks, backup is required, it said. Izuku raised his head and looked at his family. Oh kick some ass, big brother, Izumi said while holding a thumbs up, while Inko and All Might nodded. Izuku gave them one last smile before leaning back off the edge of the building. As he fell, his eyes turned green and the suit he got against All for One mystically appeared on him. Calling forth his Adachi, he swung open a portal towards the ground and reappeared in the air. As he approached tall buildings, he used his nunchucks and swung like Spider-Man across the city to his location. As he swung, people saw him and cheered him on. He was no longer the boy people looked down on. He was Deku. He was a symbol. He's a half-shell hero. He was. The teenage mystic ninja turtle. So my master is dead and Shigaraki's in jail, a boy said sitting in front of computer screen. He then turned around showing his face. Slowly he got up and walked towards a table. Ha, ha. They failed to create a better society, he said before bending down to a safe and putting in a pin. Once done, it opened like a refrigerator. That's okay, he said pulling out what was in it. Because thanks to my outside associate, I can create one in my own image, he said holding a glowing green canister while smiling crazily. <laughs> That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. Part 2 is over. See you in the next part.